Live from Joe IA Stadium in Ruston, Louisiana, it's a hot 80 degree muggy day and time for some hot football. Good afternoon, I'm Ted Dawson, along with Larry Pulowski. We're glad you've joined us for what should be an exciting whack game. Yeah, I think we're going to see some great football here today. Both teams, it's a must win situation. I know it's early in the season to say that, but it really is for both teams. They've got to come out of here with a W today, but only one will. Louisiana Tech already has a loss to Fresno State. Yes, absolutely. And Boise State starting their whack play. They've got to come out of the shoot hot. All right. Something different for Boise State today. For the first time this year, they're on grass. How's that going to affect the offense? I don't think the grass is going to bother this guy right here. Ryan Dinwiddie, the senior quarterback, is a guy that makes things happen for the Broncos. He was the Western Athletic Conference Offensive Player of the Week last week. He needs to have a big game again today. He has uh, a reshuffled offensive line, though. Meanwhile, on defense, this man has to step up. Julius Brown, for the third week in a row, is going to be facing some outstanding receivers. Every week in the whack, the passing game comes into play. Certainly today, it's going to be huge and Julius Brown and all the defensive backs must have a big game today. Because this is one of the best quarterbacks in the country. Big, tall, rangy Luke McCown, who is going to be a real threat today. Yeah, he'll absolutely be a factor today. And this guy has the potential to be playing on Sundays, too, after this senior year of his. Luke McCown, big, strong quarterback. Defensive backfield better be ready for him today. On defense, take a look at the reason the Broncos may not be able to run very much. Yeah, Antonio Crow is a guy that you're going to see all over the field today. Number 51 will come off the end. He'll come up the middle. He will make plays all day long for this La Tech defense. Well, speaking of a guy who is all over the field, we've got a guy like that. Our top athlete bringing you the insights from the players, Jeff Caves. Jeff. Ted, you mentioned reshuffling on the Boise State offensive line. MJ Ansel, the guard, is not going to be playing today with his knee. He's out another week at least. Louisiana Tech has issues as well. Their top tailback is out. Ralph Davis won't be playing for violating team rules. So both changes should affect these teams today. We'll also talk to Hawk at the end of the second quarter. Ted? So there's a couple of keys to the game. They don't have their uh, leading running back, but the guy who replaces him, Ryan Motes, averaging also 5.2 yards per game. Should be an interesting situation, but let's take a look at our overhead door keys to the game. Obviously, no big pass plays over the top of this defensive backfield for Boise State. They must contain McCown. Second of all, they have got to get the running game going early, early and often, and it'll set up the passing game. And then the special teams have been so awesome. They've returned two kicks the last two weeks, one called back because of a penalty. They need big play out of those guys today too. Tim Gilligan, the fourth leading punt returner in the country. He has been challenged to step up today. Will he do it? We'll find out. Coming up, the kickoff as Boise State takes on Louisiana Tech. It's all coming up next, right here on the Boise Television Network. Welcome back to Ruston, Louisiana. You see the Tech Bulldogs touching their Bulldog as they come out on the field. They may need a little luck today because uh, Boise State is primed and ready. Well, let's take a look at a series history between these two teams. Obviously, the sixth time they've gotten together, and La Tech has definitely had the advantage in this meeting. But last time out, the Broncos took advantage. Boise State comes into this game with a record of three wins and one loss. Their only loss, of course, against Oregon State. This team is 2-2, two and two, but they do have a victory against Michigan State and a close loss to Fresno State at Fresno. You see 83 degrees today, virtually no wind, but high humidity. And uh, I'll tell you what, what kind of shape these teams are going to be a, a factor before this game is over. Got to love the weather casters in this neck of the woods. They told us yesterday it was going to be 83 and 60% humidity. They hit it right on the nose. Two of the outstanding young coaches in the country, Jack McDowell, of course, comes from a famous coaching family, and Dan Hawkins, all kinds of talk about him, about uh, the successes he's had at Boise State, and just what an outstanding young coach he is. Ryan Dinwiddie, speaking of outstanding young people, what a job he has done this year, and uh, he kind of got it all together last week against Wyoming, and he credits the fact that his receivers are finally finishing routes and running the correct routes. So many new guys in the pass routes for Dan Hawkins and the Boise State Broncos. They've really not had enough time to get this thing together. This is now the fifth game of the year. It's starting to gel. It's starting to come together. So I think you're going to see a much better effort out of that passing game today. As we get set for the Pizza Hut kickoff, something interesting. The Broncos actually won the toss, but they have deferred. I've never seen them do that. Yeah, they're, uh, it's interesting. They also took what wind there is. There's a little bit of wind at their backs now. And this kickoff brought to you by Pizza Hut, the best pizza under one roof. Pizza Hut. Jaron Wisham, number 24, and number 82, Eric Newman back deep for Tech. Tyler Jones 
of course, will kick it off for the Broncos. He's been known for his deep kickoffs. Last week, one went through the uprights. Along with the number 82, Newman. Tyler Jones out of Bora High School. And this ball game is underway. Fairly short for Jones. Wisham takes it. And it's down at about the 25-yard line. And surprisingly, most teams, oh, they think that they're successful if they keep a team inside the 30. The Broncos think they're successful if they keep them inside the 20. Absolutely. That kick by Tyler Jones, a line drive that was uh, definitely returnable by the Bulldogs, and they brought it back upfield. Luke McCown, the outstanding quarterback, 10, uh, 1,036 yards so far, five touchdowns, but six interceptions. Number 83, Sean Piper splits out wide to the left side. There are four wide receivers as McCown is alone in the backfield. Throws it quickly out to D.J. Curry, and Curry is close to first down yardage. Looks like there may be a penalty, a face mask penalty called against the Broncos on this first series as you take a look at the starting offensive lineup and there have been some change, changes there. Marcus Stewart has moved up to start uh, at center. Uh, Adrian Gonzalez moves over to right tackle. He's been the, uh, the right guard. Uh, Michael Gilmore is now the starting right guard. On the defense, five yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. Watch Cam Hall get a hold of the face mask as they head out of bounds. You see it right there, just a little bit, but that's enough to get the flag. First and 10, ball at the 41-yard line. I'd like to thank the Stinker Stations for sponsoring our starting lineups today. Piper splits out wide to the right side. Count all the time in the world, throws it across the middle, complete to Norwood. A flag is down, and Norwood is down. Chris Carr gets him down inside Bronco territory. There is a flag down. There may be pass interference called against Chris Carr. Side judge saw Chris Carr with his hand on the back of the receiver before the pass got there. It doesn't really matter. It was completed. I'm sure they'll take the gain. Chris Norwood, one of the top receivers on this Bulldog team. 13 catches for 131 yards and one touchdown so far. And these receivers are very... Pass interference on the defense. Penalty is declined. First down. Paul LeBen, the referee, as you take a look at the starting defensive line. Julius Roberts, Paul Allen, Dane Oldham, the leading tackler. They've been the same all year long, same starting uh, linebackers. Corey Hall, the freshman, has done such an outstanding job. Andy Avalos, he's had... Uh, 11 now, double-figure tackle games. First and 10, ball at the 38. The first give is to Moats. And Moats has about six yards on the first run of the afternoon. He's getting the start today. Mike Williams making the stop. Ralph Davis, the normal starting tailback, out for disciplinary reasons. Moats is a sophomore out of Dallas, Texas. Carried the ball 26 times for 156 yards, yards coming into this game. Bulldogs. Piper and DJ Curry split out wide to the left side. McCown looks like he may be changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Three-step drop, throws it quickly to Piper. Piper is hit immediately, but not before he picks up the first down and a lot more as he takes it down to the 20-yard line. Franklin making Gabe Franklin the making the stop for the Broncos, and uh, you got to say this is a pretty impressive drive. Well, certainly I believe what the Bronco defense expected that they would come out throwing the ball, and the Bulldogs have done just that. They've mixed in one run, but most of the yardage that's been gained, obviously coming through the air. Sean Piper, the player you just saw, spent three years as a non-scholarship player, finally got a scholarship this year. McCown again changes the play at the line of scrimmage. Norwood splits out farther to the right. And now he took too much time. Luke McCown, a 6'4", 200-pound, three-year letterman senior out of Jacksonville, Texas. His brother, of course, played for Texas A&M. Delay a game on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Replay first down. Freddie King has checked in, a sophomore from Winfield, Louisiana, for the first time this afternoon. He replaces the tight end, 
Aaron Caps. Watching some film this week of Louisiana Tech's offense against Fresno State. Moved up and down the field between the 20s, but had a little trouble getting it in the end zone and only scored six points against Fresno State. Five wide receivers. And uh, DJ Curry was wide open and dropped the ball. Second down and 15. Curry has 11 catches for 188 yards coming into this ball game, and he just flat blew that one. And with as much as this Boise State defense blitzes the passer, you're going to see a lot of man-to-man -man coverage. Here you see the three DBs locked up on the three wide receivers, and Curry just thought about turning up field before he had the handle. Second down, 15, ball at the 25-yard line. They do have an outstanding field goal kicker here in Ruston, Louisiana. McCown has only had one run play so far. It throws across to the uh, outside. It's complete to number 19, Eric Franklin. Franklin, the senior out of Lake Charles, Louisiana. And uh, they'll give him about seven or eight yards on forward progress. Looks like you're going to spot it at the 16-yard line. That'll bring up a third and five. Just no pressure at all on McCown. Chris Carr making the stop. Two ways to go with passing offense. You've either got a blitz, 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 or you lay back and leave eight guys in coverage, and the Broncos kind of electing to do that right now. Third and six. Into the end zone, overthrown, intended for DJ Curry, and that'll bring up a fourth down, and our first chance to see Josh Scobie who has a 52 field goals in his career here at Louisiana Tech. So far this year, he has seven of nine that'll field be, goals. It'll be very frustrating for Luke McCown and Jack Bicknell to not be able to get the ball into the end zone and have Mc to settle for another field goal. McCown was four of six for 59 yards on that drive. 37-yard field goal for Josh Scobie. Maxi Kazi to hold. Ball is down, the kick is up. Looks good, is good. So first blood goes to the Bulldogs here in Ruston, Louisiana. And with 12 minutes and 50 seconds left to play in the first quarter, the score, Louisiana Tech three, Boise State nothing. Welcome back to Ruston, Louisiana, the whack fact of the game, Larry. What is the significance of the Commissioner's Cup in the Western Athletic Conference? Now, first of all, significance is an awful big word for a couple <laughs> of old football players to be yakking about, but I have no idea, so I'm going to learn with you that our Domino's whack fact of the game will come up in just a minute. Scobie set to kick off. Chris Carr and Donnie Heck standing deep in their own end zone. Scobie's another guy with a strong leg. Heck is going to take it seven yards deep. and should not have taken it out. Gets to about the 11 yards. Great coverage by the Bulldogs, and that's the kind of coverage that uh, the Broncos have seen all year. Now, with a kick that deep in the end zone, Ted, you have trouble getting up to your wedge, and Donnie Heck got caught so deep in the end zone, and his wedge took off a little early, and there was no prayer for him to get it back upfield. For the third week in a row, the Broncos find themselves coming from behind. As you take a look at the starting quarterback, Boy, almost virtual statistics to McCown. Michael gets his first shot. Turns it upfield. Has some running room. Still going and down at the 24-yard line. Good job by David Michael. David Michael coming into this ball game, averaging 5.5 yards a carry as you take a look at the Stinker Station starting lineup and some big changes. Uh, Tyrone Totogi moves over to left guard. Rusty Colburn moves from tackle to guard. Jason Turner gets his first start. Otherwise, it's the same as it's been all year with the tight end Kevin Lausman, Tim Gilligan, the wide receivers. Quick toss. Downfield to Acre. Wide open is Gilligan, and Gilligan has it to the about the 38-yard line. And that's the uh, the little shuttle pass that they've been working all, all week. Michael Johnson finally runs him out of bounds, and if Acre had thrown that, Gilligan was wide open if he'd thrown it properly. Watch the swing pass out here to Acre. You're not going to see him in the picture, but Gilligan gets the cornerback to bite on the fake. Has to wait for the ball. Still a great play. They've worked on that play a lot this week. They flip the lateral out to Acre. Acre throws it over the top. Worked just like he did in practice. Brett Ralph has checked into the lineup now. And Dinwiddie doesn't like what he sees. Ryan Dinwiddie calls timeout. 
He had Acre and Ralph split out wide to the left side. He brought Trent Lundin in as his, as his tight end. They expect to throw a lot to Lundin, number 81 today. What Dinwiddie didn't like is he saw a nine-man front up there for the Bulldogs on defense. And whatever play they had called, he figured wasn't going to happen. So he alertly takes the timeout, goes over, checks it out with Coach Hawkins and Coach Peterson, the head coach and offensive coordinator at Boise State. They'll get it figured out. How many games have you ever done? where T.J. Acree has more passes than Ryan Dinwiddie. Uh, none. Zero, that would be. <laughs> Here's the, watch the flare pass. It's a lateral. Acree's going backwards. The ball's going backwards. Enables him to throw it over the top. And as you said, Ted, if he would have led Gilligan, it probably would be a touchdown. But good recovery by the Bulldog defense. 37-yard gain for Acree. That's his second pass this year. The first one was underthrown that he threw to Tim Gilligan well, Michael, in the Oregon State game. The Sticker Station's defensive lineup for Louisiana Tech. Uh, they, LaCorey Street, he only stands 6'7", 314 pounds. Huge defensive lineman. Antonio Crow, we told you at the top of this game, a uh, very outstanding linebacker. I like Nash, too. He's very mobile yep. in that middle linebacker spot. He, he gets around, too. Nash comes in with 18 tackles, and they'll, they'll send a lot of defensive backs out there. First and 10 for the Broncos. Three-step drop again. Quick toss to Gilligan. Gilligan avoids one tackle and is knocked out of bounds at about the 26-yard line. It's Antonio Crow over there that knocked him out of bounds, and he and Lundin get into it a little bit. Ryan Didwitty with the quick pass. He's going to move the chains for the Broncos. Well, we talked earlier about how uh, Tim Gilligan was told he needed to step up. He certainly has. <laughs> so far, he listened. And it's not that he's played bad. They just expect so much out of this kid. Pass into the end zone. Touchdown, Jerry Smith. Second, excuse me, Tony McPherson, 88, not 83, beats Kevin Brown, and Tony McPherson takes it in for the touchdown, his first of the year. Boy, Ryan Dinwiddie laid that right on the numbers to Tony McPherson, just runs the fade route right straight up the field five step drop watch this ball hit him right in the hands right on the numbers that perfect. is about as perfect as it gets and McPherson clearly had beaten the defensive man Kevin Brown the extra point is still good Tyler Jones is now 31 of 31 in his career on extra points a four play 89 yard drive by the Broncos and they lead it by a score of seven to three. Tony McPherson, the six foot, 183 pound junior JC transfer out of Stockton, California, and Delta JC, puts the Broncos up by four here with 12.04 left to play in the first quarter. Once again, a short kick by Jones. Taken at the eight yard line by Wisham. But actually, better results as far as coverage is concerned. Well, that was designed that way, Ted. He popped that ball up, trying to drop it down around the 5 to 10 yard line and did an excellent job of doing just that and allowed that coverage team to come down and make it work. Hey, here's our domino whack fact of the game. What is the significance of this Commissioner's Cup? I ask you, what is it? Well, it's obviously awarded to the WAC school that totals the most championships as determined by a point total. SMU won the first cup in 2002. Brand new deal that the WAC has uh, established and points for different levels of competition. Kind of an interesting little little uh, gimmick to do there. McCown, who was four for six last time, throws the quick uh, shout out to DJ Curry, and Curry has about seven, eight yards. Most of the passing attempts for La Tech so far in this ball game have been the quick strike variety, three step drops. One step drop, get the ball to a wide receiver and let them do their magic in the open field and it's worked very effectively. That gained nine yards. McCown came into this ball game hitting 59.5% of his passes. It's been one. There's only been one running play. Will they try to run it for the first down? Yes. And Moats, I don't think got it. We're gonna mark it over the 30. Corey Hall right there. That'll give him enough for the first down. Got Paul a little Allen bit also. of secondary effort there once he hit the line of scrimmage and pushed it over the 30-yard line, so they'll move the chains. Yep. Julius Cosby and Eric Newman checked into the lineup. 
along with Freddie King. Franklin and Piper split out wide to the right side. Down, quick cross again. Right there is Wes Nurse. Breaks that tackle, but can't get away from Cam Hall. Nice defensive play that time on Freddie King, who came into this game with eight catches for 58 yards. Mike Williams also on the end of that play. Watch Wes Nurse, number 21, come up and stop the play. Gets the receiver to go back inside, and there's a lot more help inside, but nobody can get a hold of this guy until Cam Hall and Mike Williams get him. Cam Hall did a good job of avoiding block. Second down and 10. Norwood splits wide to the right side this time. A down five-step drop. Rolls out. Being chased by Roberts. Goes back the other way. Now he's being chased hard. Gets away from Berger. Throws. Complete to Norwood for the first down. Run out of bounds by Chris Carr. Chris Norwood, a 6'1", 181-pound senior, just finally worked his way free. Give McCown credit for that one. All kind First of all, he gets away from Roberts, then he gets away from Berger. Yeah, all kind of pressure there. The defense has got to make that play. They've got to tackle the guy back there. You can't expect those defensive backs to cover a guy back and forth across the field. McCown doesn't like the play, so he changes it to the line of scrimmage. And now doesn't like it at all. So he calls his first timeout of the afternoon with 10-12 left to play here in the first quarter. Only two seconds left on the 25-second clock, and he didn't think he could get it off in time. So pull the timeout out of the bag. That's one for each team. So what do you think of number 11 so far? Well, I like the elusiveness. Obviously, that scramble, a big, big part of the way this offense works. 10-12 left to play in the first quarter. The score, Boise State 7, Louisiana Tech 3. Lots more football ahead. Stay with us. You see the score. Boise State leads it 7-3 here with uh, still 10 minutes left in the first quarter. Be sure to stay tuned at the end of our broadcast for the Idaho Lottery Lucky Play of the Game. We'll feature one of the today's top plays sponsored by the Idaho Lottery. There's just players everywhere to score big, and that might be one of the top plays of the game. Yeah, finally the pressure gets to McCown, and that pocket just collapses on top of him. Cam Hall's in there. Brad Hall was also there. Jeff Caves is down on the field. Jeff, what have you seen so far? Ted, what you just saw is exactly what has to happen for Boise State. They have one-on-one -on -one pass rushing opportunities. They're not taking advantage of it. They gave him way too much time on that first drive. Julius Roberts has had a good week. The last week, he needs to really step up and do something on this series. McCown keeping a running back in to block for him this time. Now he sends him out in the pattern. Throws complete to Eric Franklin, number 19. And Franklin has another first down. 15-yard out route by Franklin and a nifty catch here at the end. Four-man rush this time for the Broncos, and McCown's got all day to throw the ball. Look at that acrobatic catch on the sidelines. Eric Franklin's an outstanding senior from Lake Charles, Louisiana. Came into this volume with only four catches, though, for 98 yards. His longest was 57. Because he did that against Miami. First and 10. Both teams have gone up and down the field. A defensive pass interference is going to be called against Gabe Franklin against Chris Norwood. He got that right arm in there before he could get the left arm to knock the ball away. Pass interference on the defense. Spot foul, automatic first down. Well, this is not exactly the defensive game that we thought we were going to see as you watch it again. It's that right arm that got to his back before the left arm came and knocked the ball away that the officials called. But trust me, Dan Hawkins will not be upset about that play. Oh, he wants his defensive backs to be aggressive. They have to be aggressive against this offense. You cannot sit back and let them come to you. Once again, McCown keeping his running back in. Throws it across the middle and almost intercepted by Corey Hall. The freshman, the red shirt freshman out of Glens Ferry came very close to his first interception. He's got 28 tackles so far. What a great job this freshman has done. He really has been a huge part of this defense all season long. I mean, it started off in that first game against Idaho State, and it's just continued 
and he got his hand on that one, but it did it hit him in a bad spot. You know, when you hit a linebacker in the hands, you should know. It's in inevitable you're going to drop it. That's why you're a linebacker. McCown. There's the kick out to Norwood. And Norwood Please picks up about Norwood. four yards. Franklin in on the stop. Avalos helping to make the stop. Third and, and five now for and five. La Tech. And what's been a pretty dynamic offense, again, as I said earlier, between the 20s, they've just moved the ball against virtually everybody, but they've had a little trouble finishing the job and getting it in the end zone. The last time they had third and six, the Bronco defense came up strong. The three defensive linemen. None of them in a down stance. They're all dancing around. The cat being pressured, carries out. The ball is loose. They're calling that an incomplete pass. An incomplete pass, and J Chris Carr did a great really job complete. coming in from the right side. The I don't think Luke McCown ever saw the Broncos coming off that corner. But he's going to feel him tomorrow, I'll tell you that. Wow. He got nailed as you watch it again. Watch the backside. I don't think Just Luke ever sees it coming right here, right in the back. Boy, that is, and he really kind of a glancing blow. And a little concern on my part if that actually was going forward. Josh Scobie trying a 47-yarder. Scobie's got the leg. It's good. Josh Scobie with two field goals. Brings the Bulldogs within one with 8.29 left to play here in the first quarter. And Poe, you are absolutely right. Between the 20s, they have been moving the ball. Jeff Caves, maybe he could tell us how the Broncos have stiffened on defense once they get close. Jeff. Well, they have good red zone. I mean, that's what you have to do. You got to come up big. You know, this is a big weekend for Louisiana Tech. They're celebrating the 1973 National Championship. It's a big year for Boise State football as well. I had a chance to talk to Don Hutt, who's the all-time receiving leader for Boise State this week. They lost to Louisiana Tech in the semifinals of that football game. And I asked him about how that game went. He said it ended late. It was a very difficult loss. Paul J. Schneider remembers it. Roger Carr catching a pass behind Boise State's defense and winning the game late. I asked him what the game was like. It was the Pioneer Bowl in Division II at that time. And they came up into the Wichita Falls area, got off the plane, and they all had long hair. <laughs> Nobody knew who they were, but it didn't end up well, but they certainly got, uh, got going later. Ted? Thanks, Jeff. Look for Cowan, 9th to 13, as you take a look at a 10 play, 50 yard scoring drive. Uh, that was three and a half minutes. Is it the fumble, folks? What do you think, Lair? I think they just kicked off. I'm not going to make any <laughs> comments on that one. Scobie's <laughs> kicking off. Heck at the 10. The 20. Still going as he crosses the 25 to about the 27 yard line. And there's a flag back down to. Back uh, in an area where Louisiana Tech would have been offsides. What would you do? I think they're going to call uh, maybe illegal motion. They were still in the huddle. Scobie came up and made the kick. So I'm not sure. They might put this flag back in their pocket or they'll call illegal procedure. Illegal position on the kicking team. Illegal position. Position. But as my question is, would you take the penalty or the play? Illegal position on the kicking team. Five-yard penalty. Re-kick. Nope. No choice. And the kickoff and kickoff return teams will come back onto the field and we'll do it again. Broncos take a lot of pride in their special teams. Every bit as important as the uh, offense or defensive teams. And the Bulldogs do a lot of crazy things on this kickoff. All week long, Kent Riddle, special teams coach, was working the Broncos on various aspects yeah, of what craziness might go on. Yesterday we saw that in the walkthrough. That's, you know, a lot of times they just walked through. Yesterday they were actually in shorts going through these drills. Yeah, there was actually a purpose to the walkthrough yesterday. <laughs> I hated those walkthroughs on Friday. Like, what a waste of time. Still to kick off again. Johnny Heck and Chris Carr back deep. A little more conventional kickoff this time by Lata. At least we think. Low line driver. Oh. 
And they actually lost five yards on the five-yard penalty. Broncos have a lot of confidence in these special teams. They think they get the ball in anybody's hand. They can break it at any time. So that's the thought process that goes into that. Hey, you know, moving back five yards, let's try it again. Didn't, didn't pan out that time for the Broncos. Well, Larry, we've seen one so-called trick play with uh, the, the quick toss to the outside receiver, and then he throws it downfield. Can we expect more? Well, you can always expect more out of Dan Hawkins and Chris Peterson. These guys have got a lot of trick plays in their bag, but the conventional plays work pretty good, too. David Michael picks up about three yards. Stopped by the left side of the defensive line. Looks like number six, Chris Van Hoy, getting up off the bottom, along with Jamel Cage. Van Hoy had uh, nine total tackles coming into this game. Cage had 17. It'll be second down, call it seven. McPherson splits out wide to the left side this time. Did Woody? Is it intercepted? No, the officials say no. Corey Brazil was there. And the official run right on the play said he trapped it. Three different officials are tapping the ground saying that the ball did make contact with the grass. Let's see this on our replay. It did hit the ground and bounce Absolutely. back up. Good job by Brazil though to come up acting like he had the catch. Third down and seven. Nobody has punted the ball yet today. Lawrence Beatty wide to the left side. And flags fall as the right side of the line jumped off. That looked like Jason Turner got an early start. Rusty Colburn. So it'll be third down now and 12. I'll start on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Replay third down. We are only halfway through this first quarter. Incredible. That's what happens when you throw the ball as much as both of these teams do. Games take a long time to get going. But boy, are they fun to watch. Well, then when you stop them with penalties, that makes them longer. <laughs> Bakery now spread out wide to the left. Then Woody under pressure. Going to run it himself and run out of bounds after a gain of maybe a couple of yards. Antonio Crow, the man we told you about at the start of this game, he was the one putting the pressure on. No time to set up for Ryan Dinwiddie. He had to scramble to his right, right off the get-go. He had no time to get that ball downfield. Kyle Stringer, who had a great game last week against Wyoming, averaging over 50 yards a punt. Is now hitting 42.4 yards Brazil for the punt. Corey Brazil is back deep. Low snap. Stringer gets off a boomer, and Brazil has some running room. Down at the 45 yard line. Barrios. Barrios is the man who makes this a 41 yard punt, but a big return by Corey Brazil. Ted, let's take a look at our Lexus Bronco trivia. What's the single season mark for pass attempts at Boise State University? But it's a lot. Might break that record today in one game. Well, they've had some outstanding quarterbacks here. You know, of course, about Terry Bradshaw. Tim Rette, who now they say they want to start for the San Francisco 49ers. And Luke McCown. McCown, it's only the second running play of the game. Pitches up to Motes, and Motes gets all the way to Julius Brown in 13 yards before he's knocked down. Julius Brown makes a great hit. The only problem is it's 13 yards downfield. And they're going to roll that chain as you look at the numbers racked up already in this first quarter by Luke McCown. 106 yards halfway through the first quarter. Ball at the 33. McCown, quick toss to Piper. And Piper gains about five or six yards. That's that little wide receiver screen almost. Yeah, it's the swinging gate screen. Linemen come out, try to form a wall on the inside 
for the receiver to come back to. That time it gets closed down before the swinging door opens up. Came out of the, the old run and shoot offense. Piper is the receiver, wide to the left side. Toss again, intended for Norwood, Pass ball behind him. McCown red blitz and so did his receiver. McCown just threw that ball a little bit behind his receiver, or it would have been a nice read, nice catch. And now another big third down play facing the Broncos. Deep in their own territory at the 27 yard line. They've come up big on two previous ones. Three down four. Well, those quick passing plays have worked pretty well for La Tech, and they've got four receivers in the set now. Down plenty of time, throwing. Good for the first down to D.J. Curry. Two defensive backs right there. Andy Avalos and Chris Carr were right there, but McCown threaded the needle and put it in. McCown looks left and then comes back to his right. And you see Avalos with the under coverage and Carr with the coverage on top and still finds a way to get that ball in there. Avalos does not look back for the ball, and therefore he doesn't see it coming and can't knock it away. First and 10 at the 12-yard line. McCown for the end zone. Incomplete intended for Piper. Sean Piper, who has really stepped up this year, a senior out of DeRitter, Louisiana, we told you, walked onto campus, played without a scholarship for the first three years, and earned one this year. Comes back a little tenderly on that left arm. Looked like he jammed it into the abutment on the stands as he was, he was going full speed when he left the end zone, ran into the wall over there, hurt his hand a little bit. He's coming off the field. Yeah, he's really hurt. Second and ten. McCown once again changes the play at the line of scrimmage. And I think the Broncos will be off sides this time. Somebody jumped into the neutral zone just before the snap. Trying to time that snap up, and it did not work. The Broncos will be moved five yards back. Offside on the defense. Five-yard penalty, replay, second down. Ooh, that hurts, because uh, that would have brought up third and ten, and the Broncos would have had a lot more opportunities on defense. A lot of penalties this year for Boise State, yep. uncharacteristically a lot. They usually don't do that, but this year they have had numerous games over 100 yards and penalties. Danny Wilson comes into the lineup. He's the junior out of Shreveport, Louisiana. Four penalties for 20 yards for the Broncos so far. Oh, Wilson and Motes both in the backfield. McCown under pressure. Gets it away and throws it away. Brad Allen was trying to get to McCown, but he was trying to fight through a blocker at the same time. Pass was intended for Tremesian Davis. Nice job by Danny Wilson, the running back, to keep Allen off of McCown. You just can't see it at the bottom of your screen. But look at the coverage that Chris Carr has on DJ Curry. On him like a blanket. They're on everybody. He had nowhere to go except to throw it away. Mike Williams, the man who was the closest to McCown, and third down and five now. McCown, quick toss, incomplete, knocked away by Julius Brown. And we said at the top of the broadcast, Julius Brown had to step up. Well, he came over Chris Norwood that time to knock it away and did a great job. And again, field goal team comes on for the Bulldogs. Watch McCown here. you got a tight shot isolation of him here. Just great reaction to the ball by Perfect timing. Julius Brown. Very nice. Josh Scobie, two field goals Josh so Scobie far, can two, put two, his two, team two, ahead with this one. 24 yards the distance. 24-yard chip shot for the senior out of Longview, Texas. 
Keep his up. No problem. 5.50 left to play here in the first half. And the Louisiana Tech Bulldogs with lots and lots of yardage so far. But the red zone defense has been strong for the Broncos. Ted, let's take a look at our Lexus Bronco trivia. What's the single season mark for pass attempts at Boise State? There you have it. 55 passes. Louisiana State and Oregon State, both in the same year. 1989. Doesn't Obviously, that's not a single season. That's a single game. So doesn't my seem, error for screwing up the graphic. Doesn't seem like it was that long ago. Tech has 141 yards in offense so far with still almost six minutes to go in the first quarter. Jeff Caves is down on the field. Jeff, what do you got for us? You know, a lot has been said about Brad Allen not having a scholarship at Boise State. Those are the terms that he came to at Boise State. Had some things he had to take care of in the classroom and off the field. He's still working towards that. Everybody wonders why he isn't on scholarship. He's making great plays. He had a great pressure in that last situation, but he's not still gotten some things done. So it's really on Brad Allen. He wants to be a part of it. He's treated like a scholarship kid. He obviously performs like one, but he's still got to get some things done next spring. Ted? Thanks, Jeff. Uh, we, of course, have a, the coaches show, Bronco Mania, every Sunday afternoon. and uh, Brad was the special guest on that show. It's amazing how small he is. Of course, as Dan Hawkins says, he's all heart. So. Josh Scobie, another line driver. Tech fumbles it at the five. And barely makes it to the 15-yard line. Those kickoffs are hard to handle. That's a good strategy employed by Louisiana Tech today to make that ball hit the ground and see if these guys can put on their fielder's glove. Scoring drive of only eight plays and didn't take much time off the clock either. Of course, the last Bronco, the touch touchdown the Broncos had, took about 35 seconds <laughs> for their drive. Went 89 yards. Another oh. flag down on the field at the 37-yard line. Oh, we could have a break here. Encroachment on the kicking team. Five-yard right. penalty, re-kick. Big break for the Broncos. Yeah, that was huge. They uh, did a real nice job, the Bulldogs, in getting downfield. Johnny Heck had a little trouble fielding that uh, line drive kick. And boy, once those things hit the ground, you're right, Ted. They are real hard to get a handle on. This is a beautiful place for football. Beautiful stadium. It's fun to come to the south. Well, we'll see if Johnny Heck can get a little better handle on this ball and improve their lot in life. The last time they lost about seven yards and the difference of the returns. You know why David Michael not returning kicks? I do not. I think they just, the wear and tear on David Michael, yeah. they want to keep to a minimum, I believe. So Chris Carr and Donnie Heck are going to get that duty most of the time. Michael is the leading kick returner. He's got six so far this year, but uh, so far, not today. Knock on wood for David Michael, but that knee's holding up very well that he injured last year. He punts, he kicks it high this time. Chris Carr at the 10. And down to about the 24-yard line. And a late hit penalty is going to come in. Oh. Take that back. It's holding against the Broncos. Lee Marks. The little grabbing there towards the end of that play. I guess the official was so uh, caught up on that, he missed the late hit. Again, the referee for today's ball game is holding LeBend. On return team. Five-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. That's the killer on that. It's from the spot of the foul, so that'll move this ball all the way back to the 11-yard line. And again, the Broncos are going to start in pretty nasty field position. I guess the Broncos, a penalty against Louisiana Tech, ends up in a yard loss for the Broncos. Eye formation this time. Now they shift out of it. Look at the, pos the possession for Louisiana Tech so far. The toss is complete. But good defense. Well, now a late flag comes in again. Beatty, Lawrence Beatty, the man making uh, the catch. 
Antonio Crow was out there. Boy, is that Crow? You you said at the top of the show, Larry, that Crow would be flying around the field, and he really does. He's a very mobile guy, and they put him in a lot of positions to make plays. I don't think that was his problem there. I think Jeremy Hamilton came in late, number eight, into the pile. I believe that's what they're going to call. Face mask on the defense. Five-yard penalty, first down. Either that or face mask they're going to call. I think they're going to call face mask. <laughs> <laughs> so that gets the Broncos out from under the shadow of their own goal. First and 10 at the 21-yard line. Ryan Dinwiddie gives to Michael. And Michael gets a couple of yards and not much more. Antonio Crow, right there. Look, look at uh, the limping. Ryan Dinwiddie is limping. He injured his left ankle, not on this play, but on the play before. And he is hurting. Somebody must have rolled up on him after he threw that pass out to Lawrence Beatty because I didn't see anybody hit him, but somebody must have got him in the knee or the ankle. He is noticeably lumpy. Second down and eight. Goes out, just gets rid of the ball before he is buried by number 99, Jamel Cage. You can see the immobility there by Dinwiddie does not allow him to be able to get away from the defensive lineman. That's why All right, watch it. This was two plays ago. Watch what happens. He gets rid of the ball. Boy. It's, it's hard to see. I mean, he, he took a hit, but... Uh, big third down play. Quick toss to Gilligan. Good for the first down as he crosses near the 35-yard line. Boy, has Tim Gilligan stepped up today and Antonio Crow right there to meet him. Dinwiddie that time gets a little bit of a break in that they don't bring the dogs. I mean, usually when a defense smells a little blood in the water, they're like sharks, man. They come after you with everything. That time they gave a seven-man drop and only a four-man rush, and Dinwiddie found Gilligan for the first. Donnie Heck has checked into the lineup at running back. Dinwiddie throwing long for uh, Jerry Smith, and uh, Smith couldn't get untangled from the defensive back. Nine to seven, Louisiana Tech on top with three field goals so far. 4.15 left to play in the first quarter. And Ryan Dinwiddie still looks like he's limping a little bit. Mark Odebacoon has checked in. Trips on the right side. Three wide receivers. To give to Heck. And Heck spins forward, but not enough, not nearly enough for a first down as he's at the 39-yard line. And stop me if you've heard this, but Antonio Crow makes the stop. Probably going to hear it a lot more as this game goes on and we're not even done with the first quarter yet he's already been in on six or seven tackles third down six Andy Weldon checks in now be aware of Andy Weldon the tight end they were uh, they were running lots of plays on Thursday for Weldon designed just for Andy Weldon that pass was intended for Jerry Smith and Smith couldn't get turned around in time so it'll be a punting situation for the second time this afternoon as Ryan Dinwiddie, the good news, doesn't look to be limping as he uh, trots off the field. We watch it here as Jerry Smith tries to cut and just slips a little bit as he goes to the outside. Kind of rounds that off a little bit. And when you make that cut, Dinwiddie expects you to break it off sharp, and that's where he threw the ball. Stringer. An end-over-ender that stops bouncing at around the 26-yard line. And that's not going to help his average much. A 34-yard punt by Kyle Stringer. And the Bulldogs of Louisiana Tech are back in action again. The freshman, Kyle Stringer, from nearby Humble, Texas. I'm sure he has lots of friends and family here. 
Check our Sinclair scoreboard here as Virginia Tech had an easy route of Rutgers today. Nebraska has got a scrimmage going. Look at that game from last night. My old Utah team. That was an ugly football game. McCown, once again, changes the plays at the line of scrimmage. Five-step drop. Throws complete to Norwood. And Norwood tackled by Julius Brown. Also Andy Avalos there. But not before he picks up six or seven yards. What a job Avalos has done ever since he came here. The junior out of Corona, California, Virginia criminal Corona justice major. They give him seven Debbie yards on forward Debbie progress. Double tight end formation this time for Louisiana Tech. The give is to Motes. Motes gets away from Berger. He cuts to the outside. I can't get away from Avalos, but he does pick up a first down. Ryan Motes, who got the start when Ralph Davis got into some off-campus trouble. And Motes making the most of it as he picks up a first down for Louisiana Tech. Hard to tell whether that play was designed to go off tackle or if it was designed to bounce out. But as you watch the play here, the Broncos on the blitz. Avalos, were isolating on him, and he just runs to the football. And he and Gabe Franklin... Blocked by Adrian Gonzalez right at the line of scrimmage. Avalos just shook it off and shows you that speed to get outside and make the stop. McCown. Oh, the time in the world. Now he's got to run. He's being chased by Roberts. Gets it off. Intercepted. Cam Hall down the sideline. Still on his feet, but no. They say he went out of bounds at the 33-yard line. And for Luke McCown, that is his seventh interception of the year against five touchdown passes. And I believe McCown thought he was just throwing that ball away, and it came right down to Cam Hall, who stayed in bounds, did a great job of keeping his feet under him. McCown can't believe what he just did. Cam Hall with his first interception of the year. Boy, has he been a great player this year. He just throws it right to him. He, he thought yeah. he was throwing he it was out of bounds. He was throwing it out of bounds. Big break for the Broncos. Man. Give him first and 10 at the 32-yard line. You've got to throw that ball into the first row of the stands. David Michael falls forward for five or six yards. Byron Santiago, a junior second-string linebacker, really making the stop. Nice effort by Michael to hit that line of scrimmage hard. He got there in a hurry, and that pushed the pile downfield five yards. I think Dan Hawkins of the coaching staff saw the, the Bulldogs starting to creep up more and more on defense. Coming with the blitz here. Dinwiddie throws to Gilligan. Gilligan cuts to the outside. And is down to about the 18-yard line. What a game Tim Gilligan has had. John Nash making the stop. I well, see you called Gilligan out before the game and said, hey, you know, coaches have said you got to step up. You mentioned it. He's done it. What a great kid. Dan Hawkins was not at all happy with some of the penalties that Gilligan had last week. But one of the things he said on the coaches' show, a Bronco Mania, is that loves him like a father, and you can see that. <laughs> well, and Hawk's pretty good disciplinarian, too, so yeah. you know how that works. Dinwiddie to Heck. Donnie Heck spins forward to around the 10, 11 yard line. 105 left to play in this first quarter. It's lasted nearly an hour. Going to bring up a second and seven for Boise State, who is now in the red zone. Red zone anywhere inside the 20-yard line. Jerry Smith splits out wide to the right side. Donnie Heck, the lone setback. T.J. Akery wide to the left. Double tight ends. Dinwiddie, three-step drop. Intended for Akery and knocked away by John Nash. Got his hand on it. Some of the fans thought he should have got it, but uh, that would have been a great interception. I think Nash thinks he should have got it, yeah. too. Out of Mangum, Louisiana. I don't believe Brian Dinwiddie ever saw number 47 coming across the formation. New set of receivers. The Broncos changed three receivers on virtually every play. This time Lawrence Beatty is split out wide to the right side. Acre stays in. Beatty goes in motion. 
Dinwiddie throws it. Incomplete. Intended for Donnie Heck. And Heck was nailed just as the ball got there by Jeremy Hamilton. So now the Broncos will have a chance to, to get back in front. On a field goal, Tyler Jones, who has made five of eight field goals so far this year. And quite frankly, was having all kinds of problems in practice yesterday. Chris Van Hoy tipped that ball at the line of scrimmage, but Heck didn't have enough yardage for the first down anyway. Tyler Jones' kick is good. 28 seconds left to play in the first quarter, and the Broncos are back in front. In a game that's seen three lead changes so far, it's uh, Dan Hawkins welcoming his special teams back to the sideline, seeing his Broncos ahead by a score of 10 to 9. Listening to uh, our awesome sideline announcer, Mr. Jeffrey Caves, on his radio show this week on KTIK, talking to Coach Jack Bicknell, and Coach Bicknell told Caves that he thought this was going to be a defensive struggle more than it would be an offensive battle. Well, and I think that's panned out so far. I mean, it is, it is 10 to 9. So. That's a lot of points, but <laughs> yeah. when you think about how many times the defenses have stopped yeah. these offenses, it's been pretty impressive. Sixth play, 21-yard drive by the Broncos after the Cam Hall interception. Imagine when we see our Washington Trust Bank first quarter stat sheet, you're going to see all kinds of yards piled up, but 19 points could have been 38. Jeff Caves is down on the sidelines. Caveman. Hey, that was a lot of reason for concern when you guys noticed that Ryan Dinwiddie was limping around, but he shook it off. I think Ryan knows the difference between a sprained ankle and just a Five nagging five, situation five, that'll five, go five, away. Eight. Doesn't like to cause any more attention, but it's a very tough kid. And that is an ankle, though, that should cause some concern. So we'll keep an eye out throughout the game, especially at halftime. Ted? Tyler Jones. End over end. Coming to Newman at the two. Newman. Down right near the 20-yard line. Donnie Heck did a great job of not only breaking the wedge, but he also got the legs of Newman to trip him up and stop him from picking up 10 or 15 more yards. Lee Marks is going to get credit with the final stop. 23 seconds left to play in the first half in a game that's gone one hour so far. Tremissian Davis is the receiver wide to the right side. Sean Piper wide to the left. And Motes is back as the lone running back. McCown once again looks like he's changing the play at the line of scrimmage. McCown across the middle intended for DJ Curry. And now from 50 yards away comes the penalty. Holy mackerel. The back judge from all the way downfield, Bob Wakatich, from literally 50 yards down the field, calls the penalty. Chris Carr on the hip with the coverage. On the defense. Where is their interference? 15-yard penalty point? from what? the previous spot. There is no. Automatic first down. And the ball's overthrown. Is Receiver, too. I mean, you can't catch it. I mean, that's two bad calls on the same play. Bob Wakatich literally was clear down between the 20, 20 and 25 yard line when he threw that flag. 18 seconds left to play in the first half. McCown to Moats. Moats breaks free. Moats on his way. He's a run with Chris Carr. Louisiana Tech. Ryan Motes, whose longest run of the year was 41 yards, just broke a 64-yarder with nine seconds left to play in the first half. The sophomore from Dallas, Texas, who got his chance to start when Ralph Davis got in trouble, is proving his worth there as he ran away from Chris Carr, and there aren't very many people who can do that. Bulldogs did a great job of collapsing the defensive line from Boise State. Created a huge hole off the left tackle, and Moats hit it, and he hit it running. Maxi Causey, number 16 in the hole, comes from a family that's been playing at Louisiana Tech for seven decades. 
got to graduate pretty soon, you think. Kick is up and is good. The kick is up and good with nine seconds left to play. Louisiana Tech is back in front as you watch it again. You see the hole open up. Nifty job by Moach to just hop over the one defender that was in the hole, and then it's a foot race, and he wins. Chris Carr didn't quite get him. Great effort by the sophomore from Dallas, Texas. Watch him move away from Chris Carr. Great effort right there by Ryan Motes. I think the running game was certainly something the Broncos thought they would have under control. The longest running play of the year for the Louisiana Tech Bulldogs. And especially with Ralph Davis not in there, the senior running back sitting on the bench due to disciplinary reasons, and Boats comes in and picks up the slack. Our next Bronco Television Network broadcast takes us to Dallas, Texas on Saturday, October 18th, as the Broncos take on the Mustangs of Southern Methodist University. This pivotal whack battle starts at 1 o'clock all across the Bronco Television Network, so don't miss a play. Saturday, October 18th at 1 o'clock right here on the Bronco Television Network. Donnie Heck standing deep in his own end zone. Michael the ball, though, is going to come to Chris Carr. Michael. No, that's Michael. David Michael gets it this time across the 15 to the 18 yard line. I guess you just had to ask for him, Ted. You yeah. asked for him, and they put him back there. David Michael, who hasn't got a lot of action at the tailback position today. We've seen Donnie Heck in there quite a bit. So they're going to let him return a kick. Four seconds left to play here in the first quarter. Let's see what Ryan Dinwiddie can do. If there is any wind, it's to his back right now. But there's not much. Michael's in. High back. Fake the gift to him. Dinwiddie rolls out. Going to run it himself. And now he gets back to the line of scrimmage. As we end the first quarter of play here in Ruston, Louisiana, a uh, very interesting first quarter of play. There have been four different lead changes, but right now Louisiana Tech leads it 16 to 10. Stay with us. We'll be right back with the second quarter. Welcome back to Ruston, Louisiana. Turns out that Ryan Dinwiddie actually lost a yard on that last play. So it'll be second down and 11. Set throws. Almost intercepted by Corey Brazil. Pass was intended for Tim Gilligan, and Lee, or, uh, Brazil stepped right in front of it. Corey Brazil, who came into this ball game with a total of 33 tackles, and Dinwiddie almost had six going the other way. When he read that one perfectly, too, broke on the ball, got up in that, just barely missed that interception, and Gilligan was not remotely open on that play. Third and 11. Gilligan, plenty of time to throw. Intended for a TJ Acre, and he just bounced it into him. Acre was open, and now the Bronco defense is going to be tested again. Fans are on their feet here in Ruston, Louisiana. I wonder if that leg's not bothering him a little bit more than he lets on because I think he so. doesn't seem to be throwing the ball very well right now. What a correct the score for you. It's actually uh, right up to his punt. Springer to Brazil. Who's going to let it bounce? And Brad Hall will down it there. The score is actually 16 to 10, not 16 to 11 as you were seeing on your screen. There's 14-43 left to play here in the first half. Louisiana Tech leads it by a score of 16 to 10. Welcome back to Ruston, Louisiana. You see some of the first half stats brought to you by Washington Trust Bank. Quite frankly, it's uh, it's been an offensive show. 224 total yards for Louisiana Tech. Yeah, they're only on a pace to have 900 yards in total offense. That's a pretty impressive outing, I would say. Well, it's, it's time for the defense to step up. They've done it all year long. And McCown now changes the play again. Puts Motes back over on the other side. Down. 
Can't find anybody to throw to. Now throwing it long for Curry. Incomplete. Chris Carr was there. And, boy, I was a little, a little afraid they were going to call uh, face guarding there, Larry. Broncos having a little bit of trouble on the defensive pass scheme and looking back for the ball and finding that ball. They seem to have their back to the quarterback a lot today. It's kind of uncharacteristic. As you see McCown get forced out of the pocket, he's directing traffic back there. He wants his receiver to go deep. And he certainly must have wanted to go deeper than this because he overthrew him by 10 yards. <laughs> Quick toss goes to DJ Curry. Picks up about eight yards. It'll bring up third down and still a couple of yards to go. Made a nice move in the open field to avoid the tackle by Corey Hall to pick up another five yards. Sixteen to ten is our score. Three field goals and a touchdown for Louisiana Tech. Touchdown and a field goal for the Broncos. McCown sets, throws, complete. Good for the first down to Chris Norwood. And Franklin runs him out of bounds. Gabe Franklin, the junior out of Bishop Adowd High School in Hayward, California. But not before Louisiana Tech picks up yet another first down. Norwood, look at that one-handed one one catch. Wow, very athletic. That's a couple of acrobatic catches we've seen out of these Bulldog receivers today. They've done a nice job of corralling some fairly high passes by McCown. Chris Norwood is a 6'1 senior out of Jackson, Mississippi. 13, 50, 1. Now well, they're putting five seconds back on the clock for some reason. Gets nowhere that time as Andy Avalos was right there to meet him. Moats kind of likes that uh, open air. He, there was no place for him to go that time. Broncos on the blitz. Avalos coming off the corner. And again, they use Andy Avalos a lot like La Tech uses Antonio Crow. Second down and 11. Norwood and Eric Franklin split out wide to the right side. McCown has it tipped and knocked away by Julius Roberts. Good effort by Julius Roberts that time. The junior out of Los Angeles. And at six foot five, that's something they expect out of Julius Roberts. He's the left defensive end. Watch him get his big paw up there and just spike that thing down like a volleyball. Looked like they were throwing for Eric Franklin, who was pretty well covered. Third down and 11. Norwood and Curry split out wide to the right side. Third down and Big third down play for the Broncos. And McCown, once again, changing the play. Avalos on the blitz, doing chase. And Julius Brown was the closest man to that ball. Well, Norwood was coming back for the ball, and he slipped and fell down. McCown's lucky he threw that one, whizzed that thing out of bounds. And for the first time this afternoon, we're going to see the senior punter, Dustin Upton. Averages 43 and a half yards a punt. Upton into the punting for the Bulldogs. Gilligan Tim Gilligan, who has run State. punts back in the last two ball games. Of course, the one last week was called back. Broncos blocked the punt last week. Upton pooches it. Gilligan takes it at the 10. And knocked out of bounds at the 24-yard line. A 33-yard punt. Good return by Gilligan, who is the fourth leading punt returner in the country. 12.47 left to play in the half. Broncos down by six. And the offense, the last two series for Boise State has not moved the ball effectively at all. As you take a look at the update scoreboard presented by Sinclair. Whoa, look at the Mississippi-Florida score. 
Michigan State, a team that lost to this team all over Indiana. There's a whack game scheduled for later today. Also, Hawaii Tulsa. Dinwiddie. Hit immediately from the line of scrimmage. Antonio Crow. Whoa. Just nailed David Michael. I think Antonio's a little pumped up today. What do you think? What a good linebacker he is. Wow. He's been a menace to this Boise State offense today. We're going to see 51 in their nightmares. Gain of two for David Michael. Triple receivers on the left side. Then Lee throws complete to Derek Schumann, the freshman tight end out of Eagle. Gets a couple of yards maybe if they give him forward progress. Jeremy Hamilton right there. Broncos thought the tight end would be open. Gavin Cato also helping out on the, on the tackle. Schumann, who got his first touchdown pass a week ago against Wyoming, gets maybe, like I say, a couple of yards. It'll bring up third down and six. Couple wide receivers on the right side this time. Then what he throws to Beatty, who's got the first down. Orlando Williams making the start. But Lawrence Beatty just found the, the crease in the seam and got it. Nice little 12 yard square in. He found the open spot and sat down so that Dinwiddie could find him. He makes a good catch and he knows he's gonna get hit. Watch the square and then he just sits down right in that seam and he knows he's gonna get drilled. Talked to him a week or so ago and he said he thought he had great hands, thought he was a possession receiver. The toss to Acre. Acre trying to get to the outside, has about seven or eight yards. T.J. Acre out of Highland High School in Pocatello. Highland had a big high school game earlier this week beating Bora and their former coach. Might have some fans down there watching him too on KIDK, our affiliate in Idaho Falls, Pocatello. Welcome to the broadcast. Second down and two. David Michael is upended. DJ Jackson knifed through the offensive front. He just took the legs out from under Michael. Nowhere to go. Jackson, a junior transfer out of Columbia, Mississippi. Well, you see, Great tackle. 52, submarines Michael. Third down and five again for the Broncos. Their offense has been sputtering since that first series. Dinwiddie throws the quick toss to Gilligan. Oh, look at Spins that. out of a tackle. Still going at the 40. And finally brought down at the 30-yard line. And Tim Gilligan steps up again. Orlando Williams finally runs him down. But Tim Gilligan got about 20 yards more on that play than he should have. In fact, just a, a great one-handed catch by Gilligan for a 27-yard gain. Watch this catch. He doesn't even hardly see the ball coming. Sticks his right arm out, grabs it, spins away, and then he's down the sidelines for a big gainer down to the 29. Senior out of Elko, Nevada, gives the Broncos good field position. Donnie Heck tries to turn up field, now cut to the outside, and picks up about three or four yards. Antonio Crow once again. Heck Making made the stop. Heck made a good decision to cut that ball up instead of trying to take it out around the end. This Louisiana Tech defense is very, very mobile and very fast. You're not going to beat them around the corner very often. It looks to me like Dinwiddie is still gimping around a little bit. Michael. Couple of yards. You know, a huge hole initially opened up by the offensive line, but they didn't sustain their blocks long enough to be able to spring Michael for a big gainer. He only picks up three yards when it looked like the line of scrimmage, he was going to pick up 10, 15 yards, but they react very well as a defensive group. Looks like Gilligan bringing a play in from the side. No, Zabransky is in at quarterback now. And Dinwiddie's out on the left flank at the receiver spot. 
Zabranski puts Heck in motion. And Zabranski takes it himself after faking the give. He's going to be close to a first down. Not going to be quite there. He's about a yard oh short. God. And this is certainly areas where we've seen Zabranski. Dan Hawkins go on fourth down many, many times. And they'll be going again. Greg Swenson comes into the lineup. Eric Schumann in. Changed their mind. They took Swenson back out. Brett Ralph is split out wide to the right side. Fourth down and one. Dinwiddie under pressure. Throws complete to the tight end. Trent Lundeen. Lead to number 81, London. Trent Lundeen with a diving catch at the two-yard line. Well, there's the riverboat gambler and Dan Hawkins. They had a running play called First and they down. checked Swenson in. Then they took Swenson out and in comes Lundeen and he makes the falling catch there. That is a huge fourth down conversion. Now they same thing happened last week on fourth down. That they threw to Derek Schumann on fourth down last week. Two tight ends in the ball game. Actually, three tight ends in the game. Then Woody throwing into the end zone. Schumann just overthrown. Dinwiddie does a nice job there, making sure that only one guy, and that was Schumann, has any possibility of catching that ball. But I think he would and have to have about a 50-inch vertical leap yes. to be able to get that one. Actually, Antonio Crow was out of the ball game on that last play. Amazing. He's tired. He made a lot of tackles. Second down and goal. Ball at the four-yard line. Dinwiddie to Heck. Heck spins. And he's down to about the one-yard line. Boy, helmets flying off. A couple of tough so, yards there for Donnie Heck. He got Coach whacked. Pulowski, what do you call on third and goal? Third down. Well, I'd call a play that got him in the end zone. So I'm not sure Good. what that is, but I think you'll want to see him pass the ball. I mean, that's kind of their history. There's Donnie Heck trying to go off the left tackle, and boy, he gets popped two, three, four times, and there goes his helmet. Dinwiddie tries to keep, keep it himself. Boy, he is right at the goal line. Dinwiddie on the Jamel keeper. Cage there on the bottom of the pile. Well, I don't see any kickers coming in. No, they're Touchdown. not going to kick it here. You're going to see <laughs> try to punch this thing into the end zone. It is fourth and goal. The ball about six inches away. Ryan Dinwiddie takes it himself. Yes, touchdown! It took him a while. But the official finally called the touchdown. What a game. Dinwiddie comes up and takes the quick snap from Mike McLeod. And McLeod gets him just enough yardage to get him into the end zone. Give credit to Rusty Colburn and Tyrone Tatogi. <laughs> And Tyler Jones tries to give the Broncos another lead. This would be the fifth lead change. Well, that's and that's Darren College. Up. Does a little jumping. False start on the op end. Well, fortunately, he didn't do that Five last penalty. one. Free play to try. It's not that big a deal now, but... Had it happened on the last play, it would have been a huge deal. Took a long time to, for the kicker and the place setter to get that ball down. Mike Sanford's the guy that handles the snap. Took a long time to get that thing going. Kick is good. Tyler Jones, after 31 consecutive extra points, Misses his first one as a Bronco.
Wow, we've seen it all. 558 left to play in the half. The score, Broncos 16, Louisiana Tech 16. We're tied at 16 with six minutes left to play here in the first half and what's been a crazy game so far. Eric Newman and Jaron Westrom back deep. Jones punts it into the end zone. That's Chris Norwood as a flag comes down. Chris Norwood was sent back deep instead of Westrom that time. And Norwood's down at about the 18-yard uh, line, but the penalty called against Louisiana Tech. There's your referee, Paul LeBen. Blocking below the waist. Incredibly, lots of empty seats here in Ruston, Louisiana. Block below the waist against a kicking team. 15 yards from the end of the run, first down. How do you block below the waist on a kickoff return? Yeah, wow. That's the call. I've never seen that before. All right. Well, Louisiana Tech gets it first and 10 at the 32-yard line. It's hard to say uh, there's only about 20,000 people here in a 30,000, 30-some thousand seat stadium. And this is a team that, uh, you know, de deserves some support. I mean, you don't beat a Michigan State. Have some of the passing records this team has. Quick toss, goes out to Curry. Curry breaks a tackle. And finally runs out of bounds as he crosses the 15-yard line. Gabe Franklin makes the stop. DJ Curry. Yeah, bad numbers that time for the Broncos. Three wide receivers and only two defensive backs. That's not a very good deal. Jeff Caves is on the sideline. Jeff? Hey, Ted, you mentioned the attendance situation here at La Tech. They beat Alabama. They beat uh, Oklahoma State. And, yeah, this year they beat Michigan State. But today in the state, they're having their elections. They do it on Saturday. Compounding that, it's the opening of deer season here. So I think that probably cost them five to 10,000 seats. Ted? Actually, I hate to correct you, Jeff. It's yep. the opening of squirrel season. Oh, the squirrel <laughs> the season. The squirrel hunting season, yes. Oh, okay, so they're out there in their car. <laughs> okay. Well, that probably is popular, too. Good defensive play that time by the Broncos. We'll bring up second down and 12 yards to go. Chris Norwood wide to the right side. Ball right at midfield. The count, five-step drop. Throws. Intended for Piper, way overthrown. Gabe Franklin on the defense. Third down and 11. Piper's favoring that arm again. When he fell down, he yeah. re-injured that arm. He's going back to the sidelines. Sean Piper, 6'1", 179-pound senior. Gerald Alexander has checked into the defensive backfield for the Broncos. Big third down play. And that's Davis. Missy and Davis. Is he the one that jumped off sides? Yeah, he just start, <laughs> started running down the field. <laughs> that's pretty tough for a wide receiver to be off sides okay. I mean, in that form. Ball start on the offense. Five yard penalty. Yeah. Replay third down. You see him line up off sides once in a while. He just takes off on his route. Guess he was ready to go. Tremesian had his transmission going. Been waiting to use that all day. Huh? All day. All week. Third down and seven. Ball at the 45. Third down and 17. Excuse me. Now, no pressure. Going for Norwood. Got him. He beat Gabe Franklin to the outside. Chris Norwood picks up the first down. First down. Bulldogs. Broncos only bring four. their four down linemen on the pass rush. And this offensive front doing a great job. Five on four. Boy, no pressure. And a perfect pass to Norwood. 
24 yards. Quick toss to Curry. Curry breaks a tackle. Spins forward for another first down. D.J. Curry came into this ball game with only 11 catches for 188 yards. Seems like he's had that many in this game. Yeah, racking up some yardage on this. What is a pretty good Boise State defense. They are racking it up today. Norwood and King split out wide to the right side. Good cross to King. And King can't get away from Chris Carr. One thing you can say about this Boise State defense today is they've, for the most part, been pretty tough inside the 20-yard line. The bend but don't break philosophy that a lot of defenses employ has worked fairly well, with the exception of that one big run that Moats broke in the first quarter. Second and ten. McCone. Going. Complete to Crosby for the touchdown. Julius Crosby with his second touchdown of the year. And the junior out of Pittsburgh, Mississippi, just cut it off to the left side. And the ball was right there. Once again, no pressure on Luke McCown. Yeah, and that time the Broncos came with a blitz and still couldn't get to him. The Bulldogs did an excellent job of picking up the blitz. There comes Berger off the corner, and Avalos was coming up the middle. They had two guys in on that blitz. And Chris Carr couldn't get there in time. Josh Scobie to try the extra point. Bad snap, but they get it down, and it is good. Josh Scobie, who has now hit 123 PATs in his career, gives Louisiana Tech the 23-16 lead. Be sure to stay tuned at halftime for the Treasure Valley Dodge Dealers Halftime Report. We'll have all the scores and highlights of today's college action. It's the Dodge Halftime Report coming up in just a few minutes. Meanwhile, Luke McCown, 19 of 32 passes for 222 yards so far. 222 yards with still almost four minutes left to play in the first half. Scoby bounces it into the end zone, and this time the Broncos will uh, not run it back. Ted, let's take a look at our Jack in the Box fan of the game. How about these young fans? It looks like we got five fans of the games right there. Yeah, some good Louisiana Tech Bulldog fans here in Ruston, Louisiana, sitting on the front row rooting for their team. Who is ahead? 23 16 so far. He's going to need some teeth before he hits too many. Good look at our Jack in the Box fan of, fans of the game. First and ten. Been ready to Michael. And Michael spins forward for about eight yards. Going back to that bread and butter up the middle. Good job by the O-line creating a hole. Tight end also in on that blocking scheme was Sherm Blazer, a young guy, another freshman tight end. It's getting some playing time. The fifth tight end that the Broncos have used this year. Second and two. The D-Mike again as the first down as he crosses the 30 to the 32. Michael Johnson, the senior out of Dallas, Texas, making the stop. First time they've run that delay play. A little bit of a stutter step in the backfield by Michael, then he takes the ball. Three oh seven left to play in the first half. Broncos find themselves down by a touchdown. Dinwiddie, going long, he's got a man out there, broken up nicely at the last minute by number 28, Kevin Brown. Good defensive play that time by Brown, the six-foot senior. Yeah, good route, looks like a pretty good throw. Ryan drops it right there on the money, but Brown makes a great adjustment. And see how he looked back for the ball? 
That's something the Bronco defenders have had a little trouble doing today. Jerry Smith, the senior out of Nampa, intended to see it. Dinwiddie throws it quick to Ona Bakun, and either Ona Bakun turned the wrong way or Ryan threw it the wrong way. Mark Ona Bakun, the JC transfer out of Butte College, will bring up third down and the Bulldog fans on their feet. Three of nine, third down conversion. And that's been a problem for the Broncos this year. Then Woody out of the gun, has time, throws, complete to Beatty. Beatty has the first down as he crosses the 50. And Jonte Price makes the stop. Boy, it was close well, the to Bulldogs, an interception. The Bulldogs gamble here on the at the cornerback position and go for the interception. Kevin Brown tries to make the interception, just misses it. A 21-yard gain for Lawrence Beatty. Beatty has a 53-yarder so far this year. Another quick toss, this time to Gilligan, who's got nine yards. Kevin Brown makes the stop that time. And that ball is right on the money, waiting for Gilligan when he comes out of that break. That's a great timing route by Dinwiddie and Gilligan, probably two of the most experienced as far as looking at matchups here on who's been around the program. Broncos changed four players that time. D-Mike avoids a couple of tackles, but uh, that was it. Got enough for the first down. That's really all that play was designed to do, was pick up a couple yards. It did. Byron Santiago and Michael Johnson make the stop. Stops the clock with 1.53 to go here in the second quarter. Number 86, Sherman Blazer got his... Second chance to play in this game. There's the two-minute clock presented by the Network Group, providing all of your computer solutions. Give them a call. They'll take care of it. First and 10, Dinwiddie, under pressure, dumps it off. And another gain of about eight yards before Pharaoh Derrick makes the stop. Watch it again here as Ryan, under some pressure this time, well, it tosses the little screen. That all lines. Michael, <laughs> David, Michael right there. And Byron Santiago, number 42, also in on the stop. Second down and two. Trent Lundin goes in motion to the left side. Throw it across the middle, complete to Acre. Acre spins his way down to the 15-yard line for another first down. Pass Clock complete. running with 59 seconds left to, to play, but it'll be stopped here on the first down. Lee Johnson first making down, the stop. Aker came across the formation that time. You'll see him coming out of the left side of your picture. Good head of steam up. Outruns a couple defenders for a little while, but takes a pretty good pop at the end. Ben Woody. Throws incomplete, intended for Donnie Heck. And maybe that was the smartest play. Because there were a couple of guys bearing down on top of him. Including 6'1", 276-pound senior Jamel Cage. Jamel's a very mobile defensive lineman. He, watching film on this guy this week, he is all over the field, too. I mean, very good team speed across the board for this Bulldog defense. 48 seconds left to play. It's second and 10 from the 16-yard line. Ona Bakun goes wide to the left side. Lawrence Beatty wide to the right. Three-step drop, throw it across the middle, complete. It's Gilligan, and close to another first down. Gilligan has had an amazing first half. And I believe the Broncos are going to take a time. Second down seconds out of the first left half. to play here in the first half. And Tim Gilligan comes over to talk to his coaches. Coming up in the second half, we'll name our Connecticut Water Systems Player of the Game. Be sure to stay tuned for another sparkling Bronco performance sponsored by Connecticut Quality Water Systems. I think I know who my player of the game is so far.
Well, that guy with 87 on his back has had a heck of a first half as far as the receiving group has gone here. Really, Broncos doing a pretty good job of gaining yardage themselves. Louisiana Tech has gained a ton of yardage, yep. and the Broncos have well, kind of stayed in there with them yard for yard for the most part. 23-16, but the Broncos threaten with 39 seconds left to play here in the first half. Tyler Jones uncharacteristically misses his first extra point of his college career. Gilligan now has seven receptions for 121 yards. That gives him uh, 300 yards, a little over 300 yards for the year. On a total of 23 catches. And he's still in the ball game. Give us to Beatty on the end around. Beatty turns at the five. He spins and run out of bounds. Ooh, he just stepped out of bounds where he was in. He had a little too much gas on the accelerator that time as he went around the corner. Couldn't keep himself in bounds. But the good news the is he, he did go out of bounds, stopped the clock, and got the first down. Yeah, that's uh, three good things and only one bad thing that happens on this play. Watch him try to tightrope. Little spin move just steps out right there at the three. Oh, okay. I was going to say the sideline marker read fourth down. I thought, wait, that can't be right. To give to Donnie Heck. Heck spins forward. Oh, Donnie oh, Heck still oh, going. Ball oh, loose oh. in the end zone. Louisiana Tech has recovered. Byron Santiago came up with the loose ball. Donnie Heck fighting for the end zone. And it got knocked loose, and Byron Santiago comes up with 23 seconds left to play. That's twice, or actually three times, down in the end zone that Donnie Heck has coughed up the ball this year. Once he fell on it himself. Watch it again. Watch him fighting for the extra yardage that you talked about. He gets spun around here, and the ball just popped out. And Luke McCown's going to take a knee to let the clock run out here in the first half. And it's going to be a frustrating first half for the Broncos as they clearly know they could have tied this ball game up. they got to figure out a way to stop the uh, fine quarterback, Luke McCown, in the second half. We go to halftime. The clock running down. With no time left in the half, the score is the uh, Bulldogs of Louisiana Tech 23, the Broncos 16. It's, uh, it's going to be an interesting halftime for head coach Dan Hawkins, who cannot be too pleased with what he has seen in his Broncos here in the first half. We'll be back with our halftime report. Stay with us from Ruston. Live from Ruston, Louisiana, the Louisiana Tech Bulldogs have a 23-16 lead at halftime. I'm Ted Dawson along with Larry Pulowski. It, uh, it's been quite a game so far. Well, uh, you just cannot fumble the ball inside yeah. the five-yard line. The Broncos have done that numerous times this year. It's really something Coach Hawkins has got to be horribly displeased with. He wouldn't talk to us at the uh, end of the halftime. Jeff Caves is standing down there all by himself, but Hawk's not very happy with that play, and I don't think he's very happy with his defensive play. Either. I don't think he should be very happy with his defense. They, they've missed some big plays. They've gotten beat in some big plays, but they're facing a pretty good offensive team. Well, yeah, on the other hand, this offense has done an excellent Excellent job. Luke McCown is on target today, and the running game has been surprisingly effective for him, too. What do you expect in the second half? Well, I think we're going to see this Bronco offense do some different things, and I think the defense has got to tighten up. Yeah. Ron Collins will not be happy in the locker room. Got to put some pressure on McCown. Got to put some pressure on McCown, and you've got to stop those receivers. We'll be back. We'll have more of our halftime show. Stay with us. We've got lots more football to play. Welcome back to Ruston, Louisiana, where the Broncos of Boise State find themselves down by a touchdown here with a half of football yet to play. I'm Ted Dawson, along with Larry Pulowski, and you see down on the field the 30-year reunion of the national championship team here at Louisiana Tech, a team that actually knocked the Broncos off in an exciting ball game 
in a uh, semifinal game for that national championship. Larry? Yeah, 38-34 was the score of that game. Uh, still, you know, I know a lot of those guys that played for Boise State in that game, and I guess this was a uh, quite a tussle. And then they went on to win the national championship in a route, 34 to nothing. The Dodge halftime stats show uh, some interesting stats. Boise State actually has more passing yardage, 229 yards. Uh, but uh, Tech has a few more in total yards, 308 to 296. Lots of offensive yardage so far. Two big turnovers for both teams. Uh, Cam Hall with an interception for Boise State, and then Donnie Hack fumbling down in the end zone with just seconds left in the first half. Really, those two turnovers, too, are a 10-point swing. You consider the uh, three points on the field goal and then the seven they gave up on the fumble. T.J. Acre with this pass to Tim Gilligan gets the Broncos started. Then Dinwiddie throwing to Tony McPherson with a perfect pass into the end zone. Broncos jump out on front, but back comes Ryan Motes. Motes goes 64 yards, his longest carry as a Bulldog. He's a guy that wasn't even scheduled to start today. Ryan Dinwiddie on fourth down takes it into the end zone. It was a late call, and the officials it took them a long time before they finally said touchdown. But the Broncos went back ahead. But back comes Luke McCown, who's had a big passing day so far. This pass goes to Julius Crosby, who sticks it in the end zone. And that's the score here at halftime with the Louisiana Tech Bulldogs leading by a score of 23 to 16. Lots of football still left. We're three minutes away from the second half kickoff, so don't go away yet. Welcome back. We're in the heart of Dixie in Ruston, Louisiana, where the Bulldogs of Louisiana Tech lead Boise State by a score of 23 to 16. Down on the field is the Cave Bear, Jeff Caves. Jeff. Well, you know, we got a little chilly reception there with Hawk at the end of the quarter. Normally we get an opportunity to talk to him, but after that turnover, I think he figured there was really nothing that he could add or offered us that would give us any more insight on what did or didn't occur. I did get some yeah, news at halftime. Keep an eye on Cam Hall, the defensive back for Boise Cameron State. He's fighting a contusion of his thigh. We'll see how much playing time that he gets. Other than that, Donnie Heck has complained of a, of a finger that he's had taped up, but it's been something that's bothering him all season. I did catch up with offensive coordinator Chris Peterson, and all he could say is if they just held on to the ball, Boise State would be in great shape. I could tell they're very determined, very upset over what's happened. McNell, by the way, since he's been here is 20 wins and three losses when he has the lead at the half. Ted? Jeff Caves down on the sideline. Jeff, I guess maybe if there is good news, it's the fact that Dan Hawkins decided to uh, wait till the second half to uh, they, won, they won the coin toss and as a result, the Boise State Broncos will get the ball first here in the, uh, in the second half. Josh Scobie to kick off. Oh, he booms it. Oh, look at this. Wow. Holy mackerel. That's 15 yards out of the end zone. Holy mackerel. But there is a penalty down. There's a penalty back. Got to be offsides. Oh, that is brutal, too. Wow. That thing was like a cannon shot. That's like two years ago when they were shooting cannons off. They actually shot a cannonball up into the stands, and that's the last time they've seen the cannon, I think. But that Offside. was a cannon right there. Holy Encroachment. Mackerel. Encroachment on the kicking team. Five-yard penalty. Re-kick. Well, let's see if he can do it again. Let's see if that was a fluke. Nah, I don't think so. This guy's nails. Jack Bicknell brought his team over to impress on them the importance of still hustling back down there. It's sometimes tough after a kickoff like that to, to regroup again. Wow. You know, we were talking about Luke McCown, maybe a guy that we'll see on Sunday afternoons in the NFL. We might see this kicker, Scobie, in the NFL, too. This guy has put the wood to it. Very consistent in his field goals. And obviously, he can put the ball pretty much anywhere he wants. Donnie Heck and Chris Carr are back deep for the Broncos. Let's we'll see if they get a chance to run one out. No. Chris Carr lets it bounce out of the end zone. Well, that's got to be tough to feel, Larry. Yeah, that's virtually impossible to get in front of that ball. And Carr did a nice job just to avoid it, let it go out of the end zone, take it at the 20, and move on. So, first and 10 for the Broncos as they start. 
here in the third quarter. They find themselves down by a touchdown. This game could easily have been tied. You saw the statistics, pretty even. But uh, the defense for the Broncos has got to get tougher. And uh, as Jeff Cave said, they've got to hang on to the ball here in the second half. They come out and shotgun. The, give, the fake give is to Michael. Dinwiddie has about five or six yards. Well, so much for a leg problem for Ryan Dinwiddie. Wendell Crow, the other Crow on this Bulldog team, sophomore out of Dallas, Texas. Take a look at Texas Ryan's stop. numbers on the day. Pretty impressive first half. And six rushing yards on first down. High formation. Swenson is the up back. Now he splits off to the right. Dinwiddie throws complete to Gilligan again. And Gilligan dances down the sidelines to the 39-yard line. Eight catches for Tim Gilligan. And again, the cornerback, Jerron Wisham, gambles on the interception, doesn't get it. See him coming up right there, breaking on the ball, actually just trying to knock it away, but Gilligan spins out, picks up good yardage. Gilligan now has eight catches for a total of 134 yards. David Michael cuts to the outside. Needs a block, gets it, and run out of bounds at the 45-yard line. There's a senior running back for you. You know, he could have turned it upfield, maybe picked up another yard, taken another hit. Nah, get out of bounds, take what I can get. Look, yeah, at, look at the college. great cut right there. Lead block by College, who pulls around, gets the block on Jeremy Hamilton that springs him. Corey Brazil missed the tackle. First to 10, Lawrence Beatty out wide to the left side this time. Jerry Smith wide right. Dinwiddie going long for Beatty. Lawrence Beatty is there! Down at the one-yard line. Lawrence Beatty goes stumbling into the end zone. The official says he's down at the one-yard line. Jaron Wisham was the defensive back. But what a great drive for the Broncos. 45 yards to Lawrence Beatty. Well, look at the concentration by Beatty at the end of this play. The defender's right there. I mean, this is great coverage. He closed. Now, again, didn't look back for the ball, but Beatty, what a great job of concentration. Oh, and how man. is he not in the end zone? Yeah, look at it. There's no way he wasn't in the end zone. Dinwiddie takes it himself. Dinwiddie Still no defense. call. But it took him forever last time before they made a touchdown call, and they're not going to give it to him. Watch, watch the pass. You tell me whether or not Lawrence Beatty is in the end zone. Second down goal. Oh, man. He was, he, not only was he in the end zone, he was about a yard and a half in the end zone. Second down and goal. Dinwiddie. In this zone. time. Dinwiddie this time he goes over his right side, Rusty Colburn and Jason Turner, along with the center, Mike McLeod. And we are a, an extra point away from this game being tied. You know, that quick snap is what helps him get up there, and, and the defense is just not quite totally set and ready to go. You get just a little push, and that's all you need is an inch. Doesn't and Dinwiddie went low that time. Tyler Jones to kick out of the hold of Mike Sanford. And this time, Tyler Jones makes it good. We're all tied. 13-30 left to play here in the third quarter. The Broncos break out on top. It's 23-23. to Boy, do not leave now. Lots of football ahead. Welcome back to Ruston, Louisiana. We're all tied up as Tyler Jones gets set to kick off deep for the Broncos. Jones sends it to the left side, taking four yards deep. Norwood out of the end zone. Norwood is down at about the 14, 15 yard line. Check this point after and see if it might have been blocked. I think there's going to be some pressure right up the middle. There you see, just got his fingertips on the ball. Wendell Crow, the sophomore out of Dallas. 
but it still had enough impetus to get into the get between the uprights. Six that play should have been a four play 80 yard drive. Took a minute and a half off the clock, and we're tied at 23. Luke McCown throws it quickly to Curry. Curry, it's got running room, and there he goes. Curry, that one man to beat, cannot get away from Gabe Franklin. How's that for lightning striking right back? DJ Curry throws, shows some great speed as he gets the quick toss and goes 66 yards. The longest catch DJ Curry had made up till then was 18 yards, and he just took it 64. And Gabe Franklin barely got a hand on him. Well, thank goodness Gabe Franklin had the angle or he wouldn't have got there. They try it the other way to Eddie King. And King this time runs into Franklin after a gain of about five yards. The quick passing game for Louisiana Tech has worked very well today. They have gotten numerous receptions out of those quick tosses, and they've gotten a bunch of yards. West Nurse also helping out on the play. Ryan Motes checks into the lineup. Sean Piper wide to the right side. Norwood coming wide to the left. Cosby goes in a slot on the left side. McGowan into the end zone. Broken up. Intended for Piper. Julius Brown was there and Gabe Franklin. Which is an interesting scenario when you've got both cornerbacks that normally start on either side of the field on the same side of the field in a nickel or a dime package that the Broncos had out on the field. They came with the blitz. If that ball's thrown just a little bit farther, it would probably be six. Uh, it came real close to being intercepted by Franklin. Third down. Huge third down play for the Broncos. McCown for the end zone. Throwing for Davis. He can't hold on. Tremesian Davis had it in his hands and couldn't hold on. Gabe Franklin got up there with his arm and just kind of waved it in front of the wide receiver. That might have taken his eye off the ball for just a second. Davis had it in his hands. That's actually uh, Gerald Alexander. Alexander that's on the coverage. Yeah. The redshirt freshman out of Rancho Cucamonga. Fourth down and Josh Scobie to try his fourth field goal. The block kick by the special teams and every week, your favorite player, Deshaun Kabong. You know what? The special teams unit has a has a hit list of the toughest guys on the special teams. You know who's number one on that list? I think it's the guy that just blocked his field goal attempt. You can see Kabong go up over the top of the pile. Man, he gets wow. some air. Greg Graham ought to take a look at that kid. Yeah. Deshaun Kabong is number one on that special teams list you mentioned because he makes plays like that. I mean, that kid just flying through the air. He blocked what, it with his elbows. What a great play. Dinwiddie fakes the gift to Michael. Rolls right. Throws complete to Gilligan again. And he gets popped. What a game Tim Gilligan has had. Lee Johnson just drilled Gilligan. Knocked him silly, but Gilligan pops right back up. Good protection. You see Tyrone Totogi out there protecting Dinwiddie on the rollout. And boom, man, they go down in a pile there. People changing all over the field. Dinwiddie throwing complete to Lawrence Beatty again for another six, seven yards. Kevin Brown was playing way off of him. And Lawrence Beatty, who burned him last time, picks up seven or eight. He's really becoming one of the favorite targets for Ryan Dinwiddie, along with Tim Gilligan, obviously, in this game. Those have been the big two up to now. Well, how about that rifle arm of Dinwiddie? Second and two. David Michael has the first down and more as he goes racing at the umpire. Almost went into him as he gets it down to the 40-yard line. 
I think our umpire's life flashed right before his eyes when he saw number three bust out of the middle of that line of scrimmage. Watch Steve Burks here. Right up the gut. I mean, that is right oh, up the middle. Oh, get out of the way. It actually gets in the defender's way more than he does anything. The Boise State offense has come roaring to life here in the second half. Donnie Heck checking in late at the tailback spot. Brad Lau is in at fullback. Donnie Heck gets a couple of yards. Antonio Crow making the stop. Along with Wendell Crow. No relation. In fact, they spell it differently. Antonio is C-R-O-W. Wendell C-R-O-W-E. Brad Lau, you see, going out of the ballgame. Nice snap to get to Heck. And Heck fights for it. And once again, the referee from 30 yards away throws a flag. Holding against the Broncos. Ugh. Well, it's a decision by the defense here. You either bring up third and seven. Holding offense. Ten-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay second down. Yeah, we're second they're and 19. Gonna, they're going to take that every it. time, I guess. Dan Hawkins does not look like a happy coach on the sidelines. Well, I wonder who he's upset with because his offense has looked pretty doggone good so far here in this well, third quarter. Ten penalties for 77 yards. That's probably what he's upset <laughs> Quick toss to Michael. A nice open field tackle by who else? Antonio Crow. It'll be third down and about 11 yards to go. Little screen play set up that time by the Broncos, but Antonio Crow sniffed it out. Tough to make an open field tackle on David Michael, but Crow did it very effectively. Trent Lundin checks into the ball game now at tight end, replacing Derek Schumann. Dinwiddie under pressure. So it oh, complete to Lundin. Trent Lundin touchdown. That's wide open in the middle of the field. London, well, the Broncos touchdown. drawn on a play that's been run on their defense many times this year with the tight open running right straight down the middle of the defense. And he was wide open. A 41 yard touchdown pass. Lundin's longest pass to this point 22 yards. He just picks up the touchdown. His first touchdown of the year. So many times you focus in on the wide receivers and the tight end gets lost in the shuffle. Very effective weapon in most offenses if you have a tight end that can catch the ball first and run second. Tyler Jones, extra point is good. So in the first six minutes of the second half, the Broncos have scored two touchdowns. They lead by a score of 30 to 23. Lots of football still left. Stay with us. Stay tuned at the end of our broadcast for the Idaho Lottery Lucky Play of the Game. We'll feature one of the Broncos' top plays of the day, sponsored by the Idaho Lottery, encouraging players everywhere to score big, as the Broncos have certainly scored big here in the second half. Jones puts it in the end zone. Norwood on the return. Norwood. They don't get it to the 15 again. Great, great job of covering as you watch the, the uh, touchdown again. That's the wide receivers. That's who the uh, Bulldogs are covering. And Lundin is wide open. They got caught in a bad defense. They weren't really covering anybody on that play, to be brutally honest with you. Trent Lundin, his first touchdown pass. He's, uh, he's the fastest of all the wide receivers. He's also the smallest. Claims he's the strongest, but uh, Kevin Lousman kind of debates that, as does Andy Weldon. First and 10, ball at the 14-yard line. Now it's time for the defense to step up again. McCown throws across the middle, complete, and down immediately is number 19, Eric Franklin. Wes Nurse making the stop. Jeff Caves is out on the sideline. Jeff, what do you see? 
Well, Jeff Pippen and I talked at halftime, and I talked about conditioning, and he told me, he said that he thinks Louisiana Tech's defense is getting pretty tired. I was concerned about Boise State, but they're rotating in a lot of people, and see who gets to the ball and is ready to line up and play. The guys that aren't there are going to lose their gap, and they're not in shape, and they're the ones that are tired. Just keep an eye on it, Ted. Mike Williams moving around, and that defensive line does not even go down to a three-point stance. McCown throwing long. Julius Brown is down there. Is the catch made? Looks like Davis has it. Tremissian Davis, who dropped a touchdown pass, picks up a long one there, taking it right out of the grasp of Julius Brown. Nice job by the junior from West Monroe, Louisiana. Boy, and Luke McCown is just dialed in. I mean, since about halfway through the first quarter, this kid has been on the money. That's great coverage. 31-yard pass play by Luke McCown. Hard to defend that. He and Dinwiddie may both be over 500 yards today. McCown fakes the short one, going long. Oh, no. And it's broken up. Gabe, uh, uh, and Gerald Alexander was down there guarding against Sean Piper. And the Broncos in a nickel defense where they bring five defensive backs to the party. Gerald Alexander, a redshirt freshman. Look Good at the defensive technique. play. Turns back to the ball. On the receiver's hip the whole time. That is just textbook cornerback play by Alexander. Alexander's getting his most playing time, the most playing time he's had this year. Maybe because Cam Hall is hurt. E.J. Curry tackled by Chris Carr. Watch and see if this last play was offensive pass interference. And again, I think the referees, as long as you're trying to make an attempt to the ball, they're probably going to let a lot of that stuff go. It's when you have your back turned and you're not looking for the ball that you get a fly. Big third down play as you take a look at the passing yards. <laughs> Nearly 700 yards in passing so far. McCown gets rid of it, throwing long, intended for Piper, and will bring up fourth down. Julius Brown on the coverage for the Bronco defense. And we're going to see a rarity, a punt. Uh, yeah, it's like the second punt he's had tonight. Dustin Upton averaging 43 and a half yards a punt. And the Boise State defense has held. Upton. Gilligan's going to let it go, but great coffin corner kick by Upton. And the official keeps walking forward and says it went out at the nine-yard line. A 31-yard punt. Won't help his average, but uh, good job of keeping it away from Gilligan. We've got 7.54 left to play in the third quarter. Boise State has jumped in front by a score of 30 to 23. Stay with us. At the end of today's game, stay tuned for the Subway Sub of the Game. We'll highlight a non-starting player who's made a major contribution to today's game. Brought to you by Subway, where you can eat fresh. Pass to Gilligan. Gilligan is close to first down yardage. Pass to Gilligan. There have been 696 passing yards in this game so far. McGowan with 338, Dinwiddie with 321, and Acree with 37. Wow. Whatever they put in the Gatorade at halftime seems to be working for the Broncos. They've come out with a real renewed effort here offensively and defensively in the third quarter. Gilligan, 10 receptions today. Nearly as much as he's had in the first four games. Well, I guess the we coaches told you. should have asked him earlier to step it up. Yes. Lawrence Beatty wide to the right side. Second down and one. Michael breaks out, crosses the 30 to the 31-yard line for about another 12, 13 yards. Did you see Rusty Coburn in that play, number 61? He's kind of just downfield standing around, and a defender runs into him, and then Michael runs by him, and he didn't, he didn't do anything except stand there. He's going to get credit for a block. Coburn switched from tackle to guard for this game. Jason Turner got his first start. Tyrone Tatogi moved from the right side to the left side. At guard. Yeah, McLeod and College are the only two in their normal position. Michael again! Breaks a tackle at the line of scrimmage and goes forward for about a seven or eight more yards. 
Again, I'll start for the Bulldogs. Jerry Ham Jeremy Hamilton making the stop. Michael's going to get a little breather, check out for a minute. Eight carries, 89 yards for D. Mike. Trips on the left side, double slot formation. Dinwiddie throws too high to T.J. Acre. The Bulldog defense reacted to that play very well. I'm not sure if he caught it, if he's going to get much yardage anyway. Because there were five defenders out on that play. They've seen that one before. Third down, still two yards to go. Ball at the 38. Third down, two yards to go. Gilligan in motion. Pass to Gilligan. Ripped immediately, but he holds on to the ball. Brazil. Corey Brazil undressed it. But Gilligan just pops right up. That kind of a hit right there, you find out if you have any cavities. Wow. That is a jaw rattler. Man, you know, Gilligan used to have twice that many tattoos. He lost about half of them on that hit. You might have got one knocked off there. Whoa. Right under the chin. Ow. But he got the first down. And Ryan didn't when he takes a hit. But they move the chains. McPherson goes in motion. Dinwiddie throws complete to Swenson. Swenson has a first down. And Greg Swenson, who has, had a touchdown pass last week against Wyoming, picks up another 13 yards. There's the difference between the pretty boy tailback and the you know white-collar guy, the blue-collar guy. Uh, in Swenson. I mean, Swenson's now become the designated fullback receiver, I guess, for the Broncos. That's his second catch in as many weeks. Well, that's his fourth catch of the year. And he just doubled his output. He had three catches for 16 yards. I think he just picked up about 13 or 14 there. Fake the give to Michael. Throw. And the pass. Complete to Brett Ralph. And the transfer from Wyoming catches his first pass of the year. Ralph, a sophomore from Raymond, Alberta, up in Canada, education major. Just back from a Mormon mission. Started as a freshman at Wyoming. Well, this has got to make him feel good to get this first catch in the bank. He's had uh, you know, a couple little nagging injuries at the start of training camp. Kind of Ankle slowed him down. Ankle, and he had a little groin problem. Pulled his groin and pulled a... Pulled a thigh muscle and had some trouble with his legs, totally. He might. This is the 30-yard line where Jamel Cage introduces him to a little Cajun hospitality. I just heard the public address announcer mention LaCorey Street's name, and we haven't called his name out much today. He's usually a real integral part of this defensive front. Well, he's only 6'7", 314 pounds. Hard to miss. He's the right defensive tackle. Ken Woody on the time. Throws complete to his tight end. Eric Schumann. Derek Schumann crosses the 20 down to about the 18-yard line, and Antonio Crow makes the stop. Speaking of blue-collar guys, how about Schumann? I mean, that guy knows how to do one thing, and that's go north and south. A true freshman out of Eagle High School, 6'2", 225 pounds, 18 years old. Isn't that amazing? What an outstanding young man. He was so nervous going into the post-game press conference last week, he begged Coach Hawkins not to, not to have to do it. Johnny Heck. Look at Heck. A little tentative. Two hands on the ball, too. Yes. <laughs> you know, Hawk's got a a penchant for sitting guys down when they fumble. I mean, he says it. If you're gonna if you're gonna leave the ball on the turf, you're gonna be sitting on the bench because you can't do it from there. He did it with Brock Forsey last year, and he's did it with Donnie Heck the first two series of this second half. Sharon Blazer in a tight end. Lawrence Beatty out wide to the left. Beatty in motion. Trying to get the screen pass to D. Mike, and it goes nowhere. Yeah, they actually that time sent D. 
Donnie Heck out into the left flat, and they faked the ball to him, and then they came back to the screen. Trouble was, Heck was wide open in the flat. Yeah. Louisiana Tech had most of their guys over on their left-hand side. Third down and 11. Four minutes left to play here in the third quarter. Gilligan and Beatty, both wide to the left side. T.J. Akery wide to the right. Then when he throws it to Michael, David Michael breaks one tackle, but he can't break the second one. And now it'll be fourth down at about five yards to go as John Nash and Byron Santiago make the stop. Well, he got it towards the middle of the field, so that should help Tyler Jones on this field goal attempt. Fourth down five. Yeah, Mike Sanford's coming in, so... Uh, Fourth and five is a little too long for the Mississippi gambler. Well, he has been a gambler, too, on fourth down. We're about as close to the Mississippi as they're going to get this year. Tyler Jones, he's already got one field goal. This one from 35. It's good! So with 3.23 left to play in the third quarter, Mike Sanford goes off the field. Watching his team take a 33 to 23 lead, and the third quarter has been all Boise State. Well, a good job by LaTeX defense there to slow that Bronco offense down because they had had certainly two good drives. As we take a look at the Sinclair scoreboard, Michigan leading Iowa in the third quarter. Ooh, look at this game! Dirk Cutter looks like he had a pretty good game plan put together for USC. Georgia. Just racing by Alabama. There's a shocker. Yeah. How's Troy State get on the Nebraska schedule? Texas and Kansas State in a big game. Washington State after their big victory as Jeff Caves has some highlights for us. Jeff. Well, it's not a highlight. It's kind of a low light. I told you about Cam Hall's leg contusion. He took off his thigh pad, said it was loose and bothering him, and took it off. And what happens? He got hit. He could be out a week or two. That's not good. Wow. Good news, though, for Boise State's defense. You've noticed Gerald Alexander in. I think he slid over to corner, and you've seen Gabe Franklin back into the rover, nickel and dime back. And it's really helped, I think, so far in this third quarter. Ted? Chris Norwood has finally decided... I'm not going to test this Boise State special team any longer. I've got my bell rung. I haven't gotten to the 20 yet. I'm going to just take a knee and uh, we'll regroup. Neither team has done a very good job on returning the kickoffs. They've brought too many out of the end zone. Norwood makes the smart play of the day as you look at the scoring drive for the Broncos. Four and a half minutes, 78 yards. Tyler Jones' second field goal of the game. McCown with his biggest deficit that he's faced here this afternoon. Gets rid of it, throws it to Norwood, but uh, as he was dancing around, the ball just out of Norwood's reach. Good defense that time. Broncos bring Brad Allen off the right side of the defensive formation, trying to get him to the quarterback. He had success last week against the Wyoming Cowboys. He has not been able to get to McCown today. Number 57, Andrew Browning checks into the ball game. Also number 94, Mike Fine is getting his first playing time of the year. Look at the defensive line dance around. McCown under pressure, breaks a tackle, gets it away. Oh, he had uh, Piper, Sean Piper, open, but he was just under too much pressure, and uh, it'll be third down and 10. Town's done a, a remarkably good job at dancing away from the defense today. He's really done a great job of scrambling out of that pocket when pressure has been put on him. The pressure hasn't been that severe, but when it is, he seems to get away from the pressure. McCown just got it away as Andy Avalos hit him. Third down, 10. Tech is three out of nine on third downs. Let's see how they do here. Once again, the defensive line continues to jump around. McCown rolls out of the pocket. Now he's got a run and is tackled for a loss of a couple of yards. Corey Hall comes up from the linebacker spot, just gets enough Corey of Hall. his ankle to take him down. Good effort by Brad Hall putting pressure on. That's fine. Avalos 
forced him out. And look at the just just enough leg. Nice effort by Corey Hall. And I don't think Louisiana Tech has had more than a couple of first downs this quarter. High spiraling punt, but not very long. Goes out of bounds near midfield. Are you an aggressive driver? When you're running late, if you ever speed, tailgate, or run red lights, you are an aggressive driver. The Idaho Office of Highway Safety reminds everyone to remember, aggressive driving kills. You're risking more than just your life. And the uh, Bulldogs are risking more than just a bad punt. Only a 28-yard punt by Dustin Upton gives the Broncos great field position at the 46-yard line. Dinwoody, complete to Acre. Acre makes it inside the 30-yard line before he's gang tackled by three players. Pass complete. T.J. Acre is only 5'10", 175 pounds, but man, he's just tough, isn't he? I mean, he this is guy tough. is just a tough kid. You see him on the street, and you certainly don't but, think he's a football player, but but so's know, Gilligan, so's uh, Jerry Smith. They're all kind of in that same mold. Tony right? McPherson. Lawrence Beatty. Now there's a guy that'll knock your head off. David Michael breaks a tackle. Flags go down. And so does the ball. The flag is against the Boise State Broncos. And Gavin Cato has come up with the David Michael fumble. Holding on the offense, the penalty is declined, first down. Well, it'll be up to the defense again. Michael gets submarine tackle. He just came right through the ball. His helmet hit right on the ball, knocked it out. Watch the helmet. Boom, just strips it right out of there. And Gavin Cato was right there to pick it up. McCown, quick toss to Curry, and Brad Hall nails him. Great, great open field tackle by the little guy from Eagle, Brad Hall. Hall and Carr in on that play. They've seen enough of that one, I think. They are now, when they see that motion and they see that receiver come across the formation, they're getting closer to the line of scrimmage. I'm sorry, I said Brad Hall, Brad Allen. Brad Allen out of Eagle High School. By the way, Ryan Dinwiddie is now knocking on 400 yards for the game. 396. Second down and a long 11. McCown, plenty of time, throwing deep. Davis is down and he's got the touchdown. Tremissian Davis got away from Chris Carr and has the touchdown. 73 yard touchdown pass from Luke McCown to Tremesian Davis. And Davis makes up for dropping that touchdown pass earlier in the ball game. And he gets Louisiana Tech right back in it with 120 left to play in the third quarter. The Towns had trouble throwing the short ball, but he hasn't had any problem throwing the deep ball. That one, again, right on the money. Now, the receiver did have a couple steps on Carr, but that ball hits him right in stride. Josh Scobie to try the extra point. As true as your mother's love, with 1.20 left to play here in the third quarter, the Broncos still lead it by a score of 33-30. to 30. Watch it again. He's got time to throw. The pocket holds up, and he just launches one. Comes right down on the numbers. That is a pretty pass. Brad Allen was coming on the blitz, as you saw. And Davis just meet, beat Chris Carr one-on-one. -on -one. Hey, give some credit to the uh, the receiver. He did a good job. And now McCown's over 400 yards. 26 of 45 for 409 yards, two touchdowns, and one interception. So much for the defensive battle. Yes. Well, what a game. Well, you know, it's going to be hard-pressed to hold Luke McCown down for an entire half. The Broncos' defense had done a pretty good job. But remember, that all facilitated by the turnover and the fumble. Yep. Deep, deep in uh, Louisiana Tech territory. And that's two fumbles 
in Tech territory tonight. Four hundred and thirty three passing yards for Boise State, four hundred and nine for Louisiana Tech. And then he's wow. still under four hundred yards because some of that is TJ Akers. Let's see if Chris Carr takes a knee. No. He's coming out. And gets about two extra yards for it. Santiago getting up off the bottom of the pile. Chris Carr just got beat for that long touchdown pass, so obviously he wanted to instill a little, uh, little hurting on somebody. Electing to bring that ball way out of the end zone. He was nine yards deep. Well, what you said about people sitting down when they fumble, David Michael is on the bench, and Donnie Heck is the lone setback. Quick toss to Gilligan is too high. Second down and 10. Minute 12 left to play here in the third quarter. This ball game's gone for three hours already, and we still have a quarter to play. Well, Michael's fumbled. Hex fumbled. Shoot. We might see Jeff Carpenter in there next <laughs> at the tailback spot. He hasn't fumbled yet. Beatty and Gilligan wide to the right side. Pass intended for Mark Onabakun. Corey Brazil on the defensive play. That's, I can't remember this half. Ryan Dinwiddie missing two passes in a row. I think that's the first time this quarter that he's missed, missed two straight passes. And now the Bulldog fans on their feet. Lawrence Beatty wide to the right side. Dinwiddie across the middle, complete to Gilligan. Gilligan's on his horse. He may go. He's at the 30. He's got one man to beat. Pull down at the two-yard line. Whoa, what a great play by Tim Gilligan. Lee Johnson saves the touchdown. Well, now the officials are saying he's out on the three-yard line. What a great pass by offensive coordinator Chris Peterson. Well, Tim Gilligan... When he gets on that chartered plane to go home tonight, he should sleep well because he has had a lot of action today. 76 yards for Tim Gilligan down. Boy, does that quiet the crowd. They were all on their feet on third down, and now there is a hush. First down goal to go, boys and State. First and goal at the three. Donnie Heck nailed by Antonio Crow. Maybe a gain of a yard. You notice when Antonio Crow hits somebody, they go down? Immediately. He was now messing around with Since that guy. Ball carrier. What a game Second for the senior goal. from Elko, Nevada, Tim Gilligan. <laughs> 20 seconds left to play here in the third quarter. Broncos knocking on the door. <laughs> Passing to the end zone wide open is Jerry Smith. Jerry Smith from Nampa. The Skyview High School star gets the crossing pattern and has a touchdown for the second week in a row. Smith just left alone out in the corner of the end zone, did what he hangs it up. Smith did a nice job looking back up into the sun to catch that ball over his shoulder. He did a 360 just to come down with it. Jones ends at 10 pitch. Tyler Jones, who earlier in the game missed his first extra point of the year, puts this one up and good with 10 seconds left to play in the third quarter. Big, big touchdown for the Broncos, and they lead by 10, 40 to 30. Dinwiddie, Ryan Dinwiddie is now 30 for 46, 475 yards. Ted, 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 it's just a typical day in the whack. Wow. Three touchdowns, his biggest game of the year so far. And look at these. Now that's a heck of a day. 240 yards for Tim Gilligan. Wow. Watch it again as Dinwiddie 
throws to Jerry Smith for the touchdown. Great camera work, guys. Yes. Yeah, touchdown. I'll take it. Donnie Hex says, yeah, I didn't, didn't fumble. All right. 475 yards and 240 of it went to that guy. Well, we got a little quarterback shootout going on. Both quarterbacks over 400 yards in passing. Don't see that very often. Wow. Tyler Jones. Norwood takes Norwood it right at the goal line and brings it out to about the 22. Lee Marks with the tackle for Boise State. Be sure to tune in every Sunday afternoon for Bronco Mania starring Dan Hawkins. All the action starts at 5 p.m. live from the Ram Restaurant on Broadway. You can ask the coach questions in person, so don't miss it. Bronco Mania starring Dan Hawkins and you. Come on out and enjoy the show every Sunday at 5 p.m. right here on the Bronco Television Network. It shows a lot of fun. Yeah, Hawk does a pretty good job with it. You guys seem to have some fun there, you know. It's, uh... You get the cheerleaders on tomorrow. Oh, cool. They'll be performing for you. There's the star of the show right there, Dan Hawkins. He's always a better star when he wins, so we'll see what happens. Boats. It's a couple of yards. I can't remember the last time Louisiana Tech ran the ball. The third quarter's over here in Ruston, Louisiana. The score, the Boise State Broncos 40, the Bulldogs of Louisiana Tech 30. This broadcast is copyrighted by Boise State University. All rights are reserved, and you're going to want to want the rights to this one for a long time. This is going to be a classic. Should begin the fourth quarter of action. Second down, six yards to go. McCown throwing incomplete, intended for Piper, mm -hmm. and suddenly McCown has lost the uh, the touch on the ball that he's had. Well, he's throwing a short pass. If he'd throw a long one, he'd be in good shape. Let's go down on the sidelines to Jeff Caves. Hey, I know there's a lot of football left to play, and Tim Gilligan. If he gets a couple of more catches, he'll catch Mike Holton with the all-time record for a single game at 15. And he only needs about 24 more yards to catch Winky White, who set the reception record for yardage against Nevada in 1990 with 264. Ted? Thank you, Jeff. Winky White. That's another one of my all-time favorite names. Third down, seven yards to go. Quick hit to Norwood, hit immediately. Great defensive play by Andy Avalos. Here's our Washington Trust Bank third quarter stats. Look at that yardage, my word. 637 yards for Boise State, 497 for Louisiana Tech. Two turnovers, that's going to be the, uh, the negative for Dan Hawkins. Came to a football game and a track meet broke out. Let's see if Gilligan can complete the trifecta by running one back. Nope, not this time. Fair catch Fair for catch Tim Gilligan. Gilligan. Watch the job Ryan Dinwiddie has done. Perfect pass there to Tony McPherson. That was the start of the 475 yards he's racked up today. Dinwiddie tosses that one to his tight end. Trent Lundeen with his first touchdown as a Bronco. And this one to Jerry Smith. 475 yards, a new Boise State University record. And there's still a quarter to play. David Michael has hit at the line of scrimmage. Michael, only three. Very difficult to run east and west on this Louisiana Tech defense. They are just too mobile. You're very rarely going to get outside of them trying to run sideways across the field. Middle linebacker John Nash, along with the safety Gavin Cato, making the stop. And Gilligan bringing a play in from the sidelines. Second down and nine. Still plenty of time left. I mean, it is only a 10-point 10, 10 lead. I don't think anybody wants to sit on the lead, and obviously Ryan did what he does. It. Passes complete to Derek Schumann, who gets nailed immediately by who else? Antonio Crow and Corey Brazil, two of the best defensive players on this team. Crow trying to decapitate Schumann, took his helmet off. 
Boise State sure seems to have a lot of helmets fly out in the middle of a play. I, I'm not sure what that's all about, but whatever they're doing to strap those things on, they need to cinch them down a little bit. Used to be Derek Schumann's mother at the Bronco Athletic Association luncheon on, on Monday. What a great supportive parent she is for all her kids. It's really fun to talk to her. Third down, seven yards to go. Jim Woody, plenty of time, throws complete to Lawrence Beatty for the first down. Beatty falls forward in the gas grasp of Gavin Cato, but not before he picks up plenty of yardage for a first down. And Ryan Dinwiddie just keeps adding to that total. 32 completions is a new Boise State record. He still has 13 minutes left. Well, you figured by the time Dinwiddie got out of Boise State, he was going to hold most of the passing records, and it looks like he's well on his way. Might have him all today. Dinwiddie changes the play at the line of scrimmage, goes back in the gun. Thinks they're going to blitz, and they do. And Tim Gilligan has another catch and has another first down. And what a great block by Tony McPherson at the wide receiver spot to spring Gilligan for that. He cuts the legs out from under the only defender that was out there. Gave Gilligan a plenty of room to run. I think Tim Gilligan just asked to come out. Don't, don't blame him. I think he might be a little tired after where Whoa. he's been today. Gee whiz. Mark Odebacoon goes wide to the right side. Tony McPherson comes wide left. Two JC transfers. Ben Woody. Up the pass, throwing long. He's got Oda Bakun there, just overthrew him. And now a late flag comes down. I didn't see anybody around. Ryan Dinwiddie roughing the passer against Louisiana Tech. Well, I don't know where the guy went because by the time I looked there, there were no blue jerseys anywhere around. He's probably trying to run and hide from Jack Bicknell. I'm sure he's not going to be very happy with that. Gilligan now has 13 receptions for 256 yards. Actually, the biggest disappointment of this whole thing is for Jeff Cage. You realize that, don't you? Why is that? Because after this, Dan Hawkins is never going to talk to him at halftime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Hawk's a little superstitious about stuff like that. You may be right. Roughing the passer against the defense. 15 yards from the end of the run. First down. Boy, it's all turned around for Boise State here in the second half. 12.09 left to play. The referee forgot his flag. Boise State guys told him, hey, get your flag. You that's might need right. that again. That's right. I'm about ready to hold somebody. Get that flag. <laughs> the Broncos are one that told him to go pick it up. T.J. Akery will go wide to the right side. Jerry Smith comes wide to the left. Brett Ralph is in the slot to give us to Donnie Heck. Heck falls forward for about six, seven yards. Ladarius Love. 6'3", 334-pound sophomore out of Jonesboro, Louisiana, making the stop. Boy, there are some big country kids on this team. Large human beings. They might be getting a little tired right now, though. That defense has been out on the field a long time in this second half. I see some hands on the hips. That's usually not a good sign. Second down. Call it five yards to go. Dinwiddie, quick toss to Brett Ralph. His second catch, breaks a tackle. Does not have the first down as he's at the 15-yard line. Brett Ralph, six foot, 180-pound sophomore. Mentioned earlier, he transferred from the University of Wyoming, where his brother holds one of the records at Wyoming. Canadian kid out of Alberta. Might have a you know, little career in the CFL with Yeah. Comes through at Boise State. Then what he? Oh, quick toss. Almost intercepted by Corey Brazil. Well, Dinwiddie had no choice there. They sent the all-out max blitz, and he had to dump that thing out there. Unfortunately, hit a guy in blue. Dinwiddie's 52 passing attempts is a new Bronco record. Okay, what other record can you get for a single game? I guess you could have most number of touchdowns, most interceptions. You don't want to see that one. Tyler Jones on fourth down. We'll try to add three points. 
33 yards away. It's good. So Tyler Jones has made up for missing the extra point with three field goals. And with 10.38 left to play in the ball game, Boise State has jumped in front 43 to 30. Ryan Dinwiddie, 516 total yards, a brand new Boise State record. I'm not only breaking the old record, he's obliterated it so far with still 10 and a half minutes left to play. The old record was 471 yards. Ryan Dinwiddie is 516 today. Tyler Jones set to kick off. If we could just get our red cap off the field, we'd be ready to roll. There he goes. Jones is like maybe getting a little <laughs> tired. This one goes to the three. And barely across the 20-yard line is Chris Norwood. You know, we talk a lot about the offense, which did score 24 points in the third quarter, but it's been a pretty good defensive job in the third quarter. And the first five, four and a half minutes of the fourth quarter also. Ryan, Ryan Dinley, 34 of 52, 570, 507 yards passing. Yeah, with the exception of that long pass that McCown threw over the top of Chris Carr. Yeah. That was really the uh, the only bad downside so far for the Broncos defense in the second half. First and ten, McCown. Throws across the middle. Broken up nicely by Gabe Franklin, intended for D.J. Curry. And Franklin hit him just about the time the ball got there. Look at this. Look at these records. That's obscene. And you know, the crazy thing is Luke McCown's numbers aren't a whole lot different than that. He looks tired, doesn't he? Trying to get some grass out of his mouth. He's going he? to feel like a Major League Baseball pitcher. They're going to have to ice his arm down when he's done. Second and ten. McCown. Throws across the middle. He had a man there. Tremission Davis was there, but the pass was just too far out in front. It'll be third down. Now, the question is, who wins WAC Offensive Player of the Week? Is it Ryan Dinwiddie or is it Tim Gilligan? That's hard to say. You've got, uh, where's Hawaii at this week? They're in Tulsa? They're in Tulsa, yeah. Who knows what could happen there? <laughs> there, there could be some fireworks down there. McCown is now 27 of 48. For 410 yards. I say down there. I guess from here that'd be up there or over there. Yeah, over there. Count being chased by Brad Allen. Gets away. Sets throwing long. And uh, Jack Picknell wants a flag on the sidelines. The pass was intended for Eric Franklin. Gabe Franklin was down there, and you hear the boo birds. You know why Gabe Franklin didn't get a flag? He looked back looked for back. the ball. This is what Dan Hawkins has been saying all along. Every week he comes to the Bronco Athletic Association luncheons and tries to explain pass interference. Now watch his head right at the end here. Right there, he looks for the ball. That alleviates, whether it was interference or not, in the official's mind, that stops the deal. Punt coming to Gilligan. Wow. Called for the fair catch, then let it go. Punt by he had a man right in his face. Number four, Danny Wilson. The uh, second string running back was right down there on top of him. And Gilligan figures he's taken enough punishment. Yeah, the Gunner defenders have done a nice job for La Tech. They've really gotten down there and created some problems. 10 6 left to play in the ball game. The score, Boise State 43, Louisiana Tech 30. Coming into this ball game, Boise State led the conference in scoring defense, rushing defense, and pass efficiency defense. La Tech was second in WAC scoring defense. Boy, is that going to change today. Dinwiddie throws complete to his tight end. And Trent Lundeen has his second catch of the afternoon. Orlando Williams making the stop. And Dinwiddie just continues to add to that total. Derek Schumann replaces Lundeen at tight end.
By the way, lest you think that this game is over, uh, just a quick reminder that Michigan State led this team by 13 with three minutes left and lost. Quick toss to Gilligan. This time Gilligan is nailed almost immediately. Picks up maybe a couple of yards. Orlando Williams runs him out of bounds. But Gilligan continues to add to his total. We might check it, but that might tie Gilligan with the record that Jeff Caves told us about. Well, that should be 14 receptions. That's 14, so he's one away. All right, he's one away from the record. Let's see if he gets it on third down. It'll be on a slot on the left side. Third and three. Jared Zabransky. Zabransky. The designated runner at quarterback, Jared Zabransky, nice comes in job. for his, his one play of the quarter. Now he'll jog back over to the bench. Trevon Brown out of White House, Texas, makes the stop, but not before uh, Zabransky picks up a first down. Follows his blocker, Donnie Heck. Donnie Heck can't really find anybody to block, so Zabransky turns it up, picks up some good yards. He got hit right at the end by Antonio Crow. Laid a little extra nudging on him. Dinwiddie to Heck. Heck running hard. Picks up about nine more yards. Jeremy Hamilton making the stop. Gavin Cato getting up a little slowly, and now Donnie Heck limps off the field. Here's another look at Donnie Heck taking the ball. Big hole off the right side of the formation again. If Boise State's had success running, it's pretty much been to that side of the defense. Second down and two. Dinwiddie working out of the eye this time. Nothing. Tried to run it again to the right. That time they did get nothing. Ladarius Love, the 6'3", 334-pounder, laid a little hug on him. Michael, the ball carrier. Love it almost up for the Bulldogs. David Michael is approaching 100 yards, but he lost a yard that time. 17 carries, 91 yards right now for D. Mike. And big third down play for the Broncos. Third down three. Uh, you don't want to turn this ball back over to... Luke McCown. And there goes Zabransky again. Zabransky has the first down. Zabransky is a big old tough guy. When you're looking at a six foot one, 190 pounder, and I actually think he's bigger than He's that. listed at 221 in the program. 221, a red well, They've got some bad numbers on this depth yeah. chart, though. He's a big guy, and he runs hard. Big first down for the Broncos as the clock continues to run away from seven and a half minutes left. We're halfway through the final quarter of uh, the second half that's been all Boise State. Gives to Michael. Michael Volunteer. May have gotten a yard. And I think Louisiana Tech now knows that Boise State's going to try to run the clock. T.J. Jackson with that tackle in the middle of the defensive front. He just came up and put a big hit on David Michael. Gilligan, Beatty, and Akery all go wide to the right side. Pass to Gilligan. That ties the record. And gets about two or three yards. Byron Santiago there. And Tim Gilligan is in the Boise State record books. Just a little flare out, out into the flat. You hope that your receivers can get some blocks. The you receivers did break a tackle. don't do a real good job that time of blocking for Gilligan. 258 yards for Tim Gilligan. Third down, seven yards to go. And now it looks like Ryan did what he wants to talk to the official about something. 
and they'll call timeout. We were going to let the clock tick yeah, down to it. one second. Timeout. I left away 25 seconds. First clock. time out of the second half. 549 left to play here in the third quarter. Broncos lead it by a score of 43 to 30, but folks, do not go away. Remember what happened to Michigan State. Still plenty of football left. We'll be right back to bring it to you. Hey, let's take a look at our Idaho Office of Highway Safety drive of the game. There have been plenty of them in this game. Well, this was the start of the third quarter. The Broncos marched down the field. There's one of Gilligan's 15 record catches on the day. Then D. Mike gets into the action. Part of his 93-yard day. And the big play on the drive was to Beatty. He should have had the touchdown. And then Ryan did when he takes care of it. That is your Idaho Office of Highway Safety drive of the game. Third and seven right now if the Broncos want to keep this drive alive. Pass to Brent Ralph. Ball is down. And there you have it. Brent Ralph pops it up. And Louisiana Tech has the ball. Antonio Crow. Well, you got to be careful. There's 539 left to play. Well, Brent Ralph gets knocked into next week. Look at the hit. He got sandwiched between two guys. The ball pops out. Antonio Crow picks it up, and now Louisiana Tech is in business. And Ralph staggered off the field. He was uh, he is not of this world right now. He got mashed. 539, plenty of time left. Defense has got to step it up. Luke McCown, plenty of time to throw. Down the middle, he's got it right up, but can't hold on. Eric Franklin had it right in his hands, and Gabe Franklin knocked it loose. Luke McCown can't believe it. Cannot believe it. Eric Franklin, one of his steadiest receivers, had four catches for 98 yards, including a 57-yarder coming into this ball game, and flat dropped it. He would have picked up some yardage after the catch with that, too. He had a good head of steam going. Look at that pass. You know, maybe Gabe knocked it out. Second and 10. McCown being pressured. Being pressured again. And throws it away. First of all, Brad Allen came in, then Andy Avalos. Third down 10 for the well, that time McCown threw it out of bounds. We saw once in the first half where he thought he was throwing out of bounds, he threw it right to Cam Hall. This one he takes care of business on as you look at Andy Avalos, who was tracking him down. Well, Avalos, for a guy that size, 220 pounds, has got great speed. Third down. And you probably got to figure that this is four down territory. Down, being chased, has it complete, but only for a gain of a couple of yards to Chris Norwood. Julius Brown making the stop. Clock continues to run, and it's fourth down. You got it. You got it. Of course, they're going to go for it. Four wide receivers on fourth and five. This is it for Luke McCounty. Better hurry or it's going to, and now they call timeout. Chris Norwood calls timeout just as they snap the ball. 4.41 left to play in the ball game, and they were quickly running out of time as we take you down okay. to the Cave Bear. First time out of the second half. You said Brett Ralph was really having trouble getting off the field, which he really did. He was stumbling out. He had, he had company. Once he got to the sideline, he could sit down next to Derek Schumann and talk about how he felt after he went over the middle and got his head popped off, his chin strap busted in half, and then his chin cut open in half. Oh. Expect him to see back, uh, him back out there, but down here, this has been the most physical opponent Boise State's played in some time. I think this is an extremely talented defense that so far has gotten out schemed in the second half, and Gerald Alexander, Ron Collins putting him in at a cover corner, has been brilliant. They've really shut them down when it counted most. Ted? Good inside, Jeff. Really good. Uh 
good talk about what's uh, going on down there on the field. It, it's, you know, incredibly, when you've scored 73 points, you don't think of it as a defensive battle, but there have been some incredible defensive hits in this game. Ted, how about a take a look right now at our Connecticut Quality Water Systems player of the game? Well, I'm not sure we can have just one player of the game. I'm not sure we can either, but we certainly are going to get this guy on screen. But I'll tell you, we better put his running mate on screen Absolutely. too, Tim Gilligan. School records flying out the window today. Co-players of the game, Tim Gilligan and uh, Ryan Dinwiddie, who happen to be tri-captains, two of the three tri-captains on this, this year's team. Fourth down. Fourth down, a long five, call it six yards to go. McCown. Plenty of time. Throwing long. Almost intercepted. That would have been Julius Brown is upset, but well, that would have been a mistake. Well, but that was a mistake. That would have been a mistake if he had if intercepted it. It would have cost him 30 yards. He would have lost some yardage, but it always looks good in the stat it, book. To have the INT, you're right. See, then they get to run around, they get some they get some ISO coverage. Watch, here's a little push off here. Watch him push off just right. Nah, there wasn't much of a push off. I thought it was more than that. But the ball was thrown right to him. Big fourth down play. McCown is one for his last seven. You think Julius is going to go back to the sideline and say, yeah, I dropped that. I could have had the INT, but I was smart. I dropped it. Yeah, right. <laughs> Expect lots of running here. Expect lots of Antonio Pro. Oh, how many tackles has Antonio Crow got today? He must you have know, 20. Officially, they haven't given it to us during the game, but it's a huge amount. Clock running away on a game that's already lasted four, three and a half hours. Of course, when the first quarter lasted an hour. And what he fakes to give this time, rolls out, throws, incomplete intended for Gilligan. That would have been a nice catch for Gilligan to break the school record on. And it will be third down. Unfortunate part of that is it stops the clock. Brings up a third and nine for the Broncos. You see our scoreboard, time and score brought to you by the Idaho Lottery. Yeah, we've defense. seen a little defense here this afternoon. Defense. Well, look on cue. There comes the Idaho Lottery logo. <laughs> wow. Technology. Third down and nine. D Mike. Well, the good news about that is we'll run the clock, but now it looks like uh, Louisiana Tech wants to call timeout as TJ Jackson makes the stop. Yeah, the Bulldogs have called their second timeout. They've got one left, 3.43 left to play in the ball game, and they are still very much alive. All right, what about a subway sub of the game? Well, Jeff Caves has been talking about this guy all game long. Well, how about Gerald Alexander as our subway sub of the game? When Cam Hall got injured, had that thigh injury that Jeff Cave told us about, this guy came in, and what a job he has done in this, in this game. Moved him to cornerback. Moved Gabe Franklin into the rover back into a different position. Gerald Alexander comes up big. He is your Subway sub of the game. Subway, eat fresh. Redshirt freshman out of Rancho Cucamonga. He's majoring in general arts and oh, science. Wait a minute, that's why Caves likes him. That's where Caves is from. Is that Somewhere right? down in that neck of the woods. Oh, that's right. By the way, in case, you know, I know you call him the caveman. I call him the cave bear. I just don't call him late for dinner. That's that's I, I just found out that his real name is La Cueva. It's not caves. It's La Cueva. I've heard him called all kinds of things. Fourth down. Stringer gets a bad snap, but gets it off. Wow. And a great punt. Brazil. Oh, look at that. <laughs> look at that. He had it a bounced at job. the one and came back. What a great punt by Stringer. 47 yards out at the four-yard line. First of all, it was a bad snap. Stringer had to field it and just booms it out of there. Look at this thing. It just drops, hits, just like, just looks like my sandwich. It backs up. 
Yeah. I can do that with my pitching wedge, my nine iron, and then I wake up and I can't do it with any of it. That's right. I could do it by throwing it. I don't think you could have thrown a ball any better than that one. That was no incredible. better. Great punt now, by the freshman from Humble, Texas. Watch La Tech right now, Ted. I will almost bet any amount of money I have in my pocket they're going deep on this pass play. I don't think there's any question about it. Nickel defense in for the Broncos. McCown out of his own end zone, throws it. Intended for Franklin, now the flag comes. Gerald Alexander, after just being named the sub of the game, picks up an obvious defensive penalty. I think Brad Allen runs right over the oh, top of Oh, it is Brad it. Allen. That's, that's face guard. You can't do that. It, again, you're right. You don't look back for the ball. You're going to get the flag every time. Pass so far. Interference on the defense. 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. So far in this game, there have been 1,218 total offensive yards. 715 for Boise State. 503 for Louisiana Tech. We've got to pay our statistician extra today. He's burning up his pen over there. He's probably going to need a new one. <laughs> McCown. Plenty of time. Now he's got to throw it. Now he's being chased. Throwing for Norwood. Was he inbounds? Yes. And he stopped the clock at the 42-yard line. Our next Bronco Television Network broadcast takes us to Dallas, Texas on Saturday, October 18th as the Broncos take on the Mustangs of Southern Methodist University. This pivotal whack battle starts at 1 p.m. all across the Bronco Television Network, so don't miss a play. Saturday, October 18th at 1 o'clock right here on the Bronco Television Network. First down. Three and a half minutes left to play. McCown chased out of the pocket. Now he's going to run. Barrios on top of him, but McCown has all the running room in the world. Finally run out of bounds and down the 20 yard line. Chris McCown just leveled a cheerleader down there. They're asking for a and, trainer to get over there too. She and she gets hard. up before he does. He might have hit that wall over there. That is a cement abutment at the base of the stadium. Watch McCown. He gets flushed out. Barrios. Now, Barrios is not going to win many foot races with anybody, and he certainly didn't win this one with Luke McCown. Let's Jeff down. Cave's down on the field. Jeff, what did you see? Well, I think that was his girlfriend. But actually, he rolled into some luggage, and, and that's what really hurt him because it's that sharp, real heavy-duty stuff. And he'll, he'll be fine. I think he'll be back in there. Well, there's a new quarterback in there now, Maxi Kazi, number 16. Set, throwing for the end zone. Touchdown, Louisiana Tech. Tremesian Davis, and this ball game is not over, folks. There's three minutes and 12 seconds left to play. And Louisiana Tech, who came back on Michigan State, is only a touchdown away here. Maxi Kazi throws the touchdown pass. As a matter of fact, it's his cousin who's here in the booth with us, acting as our spotter. His family has been playing at Louisiana Tech for the last 70 years. Grandfather, father, cousin, uncle. The extra point is good. 3-12 left to play in the ball game. And we have got a tight one, folks. Cuzzy, just before he got hit, good coverage that time. But Tremesian Davis, who dropped a touchdown pass earlier. And Brad, Al Brad Allen was just one tick late and yep. getting to the quarterback. Gerald Alexander was right there with him. Uh, you can't blame anybody. That was just a great offensive play by number 88. Well, the Broncos, a little bit of their worst enemy, they did not do a very good job of clock management and letting that clock wind down in the previous offensive series. They left way too much time on the clock. They stopped it at 3.55. We're only at 3.12 right now. That was a quick scoring drive, highlighted by the big run by Luke McCown. Our Sinclair update finds Purdue blitzing Illinois in the third quarter. Mississippi upsetting Florida. There's some unhappy people down in Florida. Michigan State, big win over Indiana. Michigan State, the team that lost to this team. And again, a, 
I don't want to keep bringing it up, but Michigan State was up by two touchdowns with uh, between three and four minutes left in the game. Now, do you kick it away here, Poe? Oh. I think they should try that uh, that line drive squib thing they were doing. That, that seemed to work pretty effectively. It didn't give the Broncos any chance to return the ball. You wouldn't try to onside it? I don't think so at this point. I think they feel like they can get the ball back. Louisiana Tech only has one timeout left. Boise State thinks they're going to onside it. And they practiced these onside kicks all day yesterday. 715 total yards of offense for Boise State. A brand new school record here this afternoon. Louisiana Tech's got to be close to that. Well, they blew it away. Out of the end zone. First and 10 for the Broncos at the 20-yard line. They got to pick up what? Two first downs? I'd say two first downs should get it done. But the way this La Tech offense can score points and score them quickly, you're never, never ahead by enough. Yeah, the Broncos comfortably ahead by 13. All of a sudden, boom. Louisiana Tech right back in this ball game. Few folks have left, and I think they're sorry because this has been a whale of a ball game. Time for this offensive line from Boise State to really make a statement here on this drive. We've got to gain some positive yardage. Look, they've got nine guys in the box. David Michael sticks his head down and he gains about three or four. They got by the big defensive lineman, but uh, there was a big hole over there on the left side. It just closed quickly with the defensive back, Corey Brazil, coming up. Clock running, less than three minutes left now. You just, you don't want to give the ball back to Louisiana Tech. They still have one timeout remaining. Gilligan, McPherson split out wide to the right side. Do you throw it here? Dinwiddie throws to Gilligan, knocked away by Lee Johnson. Nice job. And that stops the clock with 2.28 left to play and brings up third down. Now you got to throw it. Yeah, you're almost back yourself into a corner with that situation. Third and seven. Third down and seven. This crowd. Biggest play of the game for both teams. This crowd's getting back into it. The four folks that left are getting a good show. Gilligan, Lawrence Beatty, wide to the right side. T.J. Akery, wide to the left. Dinwiddie throws it complete to Akery. Pass the first down. T.J. Akery comes up with the big play as he gets away from Lee Johnson. And the Broncos have a first down with 2.22 left to play in the ball game. Well, that's not the easiest catch in the world to make either. Akery had pretty decent coverage on him. Had to go up high to bring that thing back in. And now the clock starts. Ticking down underneath 215. Acres had a great game today also. Look at that catch. It was behind him. He had to pull it back in. Brazil was there. Acres with it's a popped popper, right after. Yeah, he did. Huge first down for the Broncos. 204 left to play in the game. Now you give it to D Mike. Michael. David Michael picks up a couple of yards. Michael Johnson making the stop, the senior out of Dallas, Texas. Bulldogs taking a little bit of a calculated risk here with, as you take a look at the network group two-minute clock, we're ticking down under 140. And they still have that timeout available, and they haven't used it. David Michael, 22 carries, 99 yards. Michael came into this ball game, averaging 5.5 yards, 114 yards per game. And he's one yard away from 100. Oh, I'm not sure he got it that time. He may have lost a couple. Now they use the timeout. Antonio Crow right there to make the stop. And the Bulldogs have called their last timeout. Now, the big question is, if you're a Bronco, what do you do? Do you pick, try to pick up the first down, or do you let time run off the clock? I think if you're in the position they're in right now, you've got to get that clock running. Yeah, That's your biggest enemy. So you run it and let time go off the clock.
All right. The Idaho Lottery play of the game, Ryan Dinwiddie. Throwing to a wide open tight end, Trent Lundeen. This put the Broncos ahead for good, at least up until this point. Trent Lundeen scores the lucky play of the game. That certainly wasn't lucky, but it was a, a stroke of luck for the Broncos at that point in time, thanks to the Idaho Lottery for our lucky play of the game. All right, third down. There'll be probably only about 30 seconds left. If they're coming out in a passing formation with Donnie Heck in the backfield. Dinwiddie, quick toss to Gilligan, who breaks the school record, but does not pick up a first down. Jerry Hamilton making the stop. Clock continues to run. There's one minute left. Gilligan with his 16th reception. Virtually no gain on the play. Now my guess is the Broncos will let the clock run down to one second and call a timeout. Dan Hawkins. Corey Brazil will be back deep for the Bulldogs. You see the clock running down. Oh, they're just going to take the penalty. I think they're going to call timeout. They'll call timeout right here. It's only oh. down to zero. Five-yard penalty, replay, fourth down. Well, I can't imagine why they do that. But. Now, if you're Louisiana Tech, you've got 29 seconds left to do something. Do you make an all-out effort here to block the punt? Well, they're coming. It looks like they got nine they guys got, coming. They got they 10 guys play. coming. High snap. The freshman booms it away. Corey Brazil takes it at the 26th. Beats one tackle. Gets away from Berrios. Gets away from another tackle. But gets away from Berger. But can't get away from Corey Hall. There are 13 seconds left in the ball game. A 42-yard punt, and the freshman, Kyle Stringer, did a great job of pulling that one down. Yeah, he just wanted to get that ball on his foot as fast as he possibly could, but they were coming up the middle. Corey Brazil ran about 10 to 12 seconds off the clock himself, running back and forth across the field. But it looked like he almost had a wall set up over there. You can't blame him. And Louisiana Tech is 40, 50, three yards away from winning this ball game. First down, Bulldogs, number 47. Triple wide receivers on the right side. McCown, under pressure from West Nurse, throws it. <laughs> Cannot get it to DJ Curry, <laughs> and there are six seconds left. <laughs> West Nurse did a nice job containing that time. West Nurse broke down when he got Headed towards the quarterback, kept his balance, didn't just run by him. Here we take a look at it again. Watch Nurse coming off the corner. They brought three guys on the blitz that time. You're not going to see the action back there, but Curry almost comes down with this ball. Curry was wide open. Yeah, he probably should have. Second down. Six seconds left to play. They make it two plays. McCown. Under pressure, Robert throws him, and he throws it in the ground. The officials say it's a fumble. Well, there's no time left on the clock. This game's over. The officials are letting it go. This ball game is over. The Broncos have come up with an incredible 43 to 37 victory, and it wasn't over until the last play of the ball game. Dan Hawkins congratulates his good friend Jack Bicknell on one of the most exciting games you will ever see. And look, McCown the is just now getting up off the ground. He was trying to throw that down into the ground to stop the clock. Look, at, they there's two outstanding fumble. quarterbacks right there. Well, there's a lot of yardage between those two guys. Julius Roberts, Roberts comes up with probably the biggest sack of his life. That is a fumble. That is clearly a fumble. He the was referee trying says to throw it's a fumble. It. Andy Avalos has got a fumble recovery to add to his. What a great game as we take you down to Jeff Caves. Jeff? Hawk, let's let you describe it. I mean, we're exhausted, so it'll be interesting to see how you feel. <laughs> Me too, but, you know, I told our team at halftime, I really thought this half would define our season. And uh, 
just in terms of having some character and some guts and some wherewithal to come out and make some plays. Hey, they got some on us, but our offense was pretty much a juggernaut till down at the end there, and uh, we had some costly, costly turnovers, and we were able to rally back from that. And uh, hey, when you go on a road in this conference and win, it, it's big. And I don't care what the score is; these guys are a great football team. I'm proud of heck as my guys. They, they showed tremendous, tremendous character in the second half. Any nervous moments there in the fourth quarter where it seemed they couldn't put them away? The, the the run game wasn't there. Was that just a clock management tool for you, or did you think you could run it? Well, it's a little bit clock management, and we're trying to be prudent a little bit and run the clock down a little bit, but also get a first down. They're packing the box and make it tough on you. So when you got a lead, it's just hard to throw it three downs, but you still need to be able to get something going. Ted Dawson told me that since you didn't talk to me at the half and you won this football game, you may never speak to us again at uh, halftime. I, I, I totally apologize. I just bolted. I had things on my mind. I wanted to get there and get it straightened out. I last thing on my mind so I'm sorry about that I tell you what a great effort Hawk I mean I don't think some of us didn't want to come back we we're that hot and tired and I can only imagine what it was like for your kids and you gotta be proud of the conditioning that they yeah. have too well I told them last night to trust the conditioning and I I think that's where Jeff Pittman and our, our work ethic comes in and I think it showed down the stretch I think our guys were ready to play a full 60 minutes hey congratulations Hawk very much thank you very much hey Misty we did it Tim Gilligan we'll talk to Ted uh, Ted will talk to Tim Tim congratulations I know you set some records, I think, for most receptions in the game. I don't know if they got the uh, yardage thing for you at the end. It's real close, if not, but this was a huge game for you, and I think the wide receivers coach, Robert Prince, has asked you to step it up and really do something, and you sure responded. Yeah, I did. Uh, I've been trying to do it all year, you know, and I just haven't had very much luck. I've been injured a little bit, and, uh, you know, some other guys have also stepped up, you know, when we needed it. And today, uh, my number was called a little bit more, and I, I stepped it up. Describe Louisiana Tech's defense in terms of how good you think they are compared to what you've seen so far. Uh, they, they just bring it to you. They're physical. Um, you know, they don't really change it up, you know, coverage-wise or anything, but uh, they got athletes and they can move around. They can fly around. So, and as you can see, they, they, they can stick you. You know, I got, I got hit a couple times and, you know, and I wasn't really sure where I was. So, uh, but, but uh, their defense is very, very good. Is this a catalyst, do you think, for this offense this year to return it to these kinds of numbers on a week-in and week-out basis or at least close to it? Well, that's what we got to do, you know, if we want to win games like this, you know, especially on the road. we got Fresno and Hawaii still and also some other games on the road that are going to be tough. And if we're going to win, you know, our defense needs to play tough and we need to put up big numbers. So, um, you know, we've been, we know we, we can put up numbers like that. You know, we also proved it tonight. So that's, so that's a good thing. Uh, Jeff, Jeff, excuse me, Jeff, this is Ted up in the booth. 16 catches, 257 yards yeah. for Tim Gilligan. 16 catches, so you've got a single game reception record, or a record that held for a long time in uh, – and Mike Holton. So for a walk on from Elko, not a bad day at the office. No, nope, not a bad day. All right, man. Thanks, Tim. Thanks. Tom, we'll uh, we'll talk to Brian Didwitty here, who set some more records. Congratulations, man. It was a heck of a day at the office for you. It was. It's great. You know, it's great that we got a our pass game. You know, carried us in the sun. We knew we had to go into this week, and receivers stepped up. We got some studs there now. I think we proved it. And our line pretty much won the game for us. You know, me and Tim get all the highlights for that, but our line has some running holes open, and they protect me all day. Talk about how you feel about yourself physically. We saw you limping in the first quarter, second quarter. It seemed like you were really hurt, and it wasn't your surgically repaired ankle you were limping on, right? No, I just got like a helmet in my shin, and it just went numb. I didn't have any feeling in it, and I uh, tweaked my hamstring a little bit later on here, but it's nothing serious. I'll be fine next week. What about the production today? What do you, what do you think was really the critical factor in putting up these kind of yards and getting this kind of results? Playing together, all 11 guys did, uh, did what we need to do, and when we play like that, you know, we can do this all week every week and uh you know i'm just proud of these guys that really this week seems like we really took a step forward beat a quality team and we got some things to clean up but you know uh we we did pretty darn good today yeah i would agree with that congratulations ryan thanks, thanks jeff ted jeff thank you very much uh you know uh, jeff i want to talk to you about some of the offensive line play right after you take a look at the last play of the game luke mccown goes down and the broncos go up The Boise State Broncos are up for 24 points in the third quarter. They beat a tough Bulldog team from Louisiana Tech by a score of 43 to 37. An exciting ball game. Larry? Yeah, an excellent game. I mean, just to come out of here with a victory. It's the first time the Broncos have come here and won. It is just huge for the program. And I assure you that three-hour plane ride home is going to be a lot nicer. Much nicer. On the six-point win. We'll go back down to Jeff Caves. Jeff. 
big shakeup in the offensive line this week. Rusty Colburn moves from tackle. Tyrone Totogi moves from right guard to left guard. Jason Turner moves into the starting lineup. How did you think they played? I think they did great. It, it, the results speak for themselves. I'll never forget last year talking to Scott Huff about how his game fell, how his scoop flop went, how he thought he did. And he said, well, I don't know, I scored 56 points. I feel pretty good about it. That's how these guys look at the production of the offense. They take ownership in it. This was a huge week for Boise State. It was about in the fifth week last year when this offense came together. This is about as together as you're ever going to see an offense with all the records that were set today against what I think is one of the most physically talented defenses I've ever seen put on a field against Boise State. These guys were tremendous. They were every bit as much, I think, as Oregon State as good. This was a great gutsy effort. I think it shows conditioning and toughness because it was hot, it was humid. They could have lost this game still all the way down to the end, and they didn't. So this is a big character builder for Boise State, and they've got a great game next week against Tulsa, and they're on a roll. I think you're going to see them rip off four or five wins in a row here. I really do, Ted. Three fumbles in the ball game. That says a lot, I think, about the Louisiana State defense. Uh, they, they've got some great, great defensive players, including a linebacker, Antonio Crow, who's as good as anybody that the uh, Broncos have faced this year. Yeah, and a couple of D linemen, the 6'7", 315-pounder you may see in the NFL. And the turnovers are something that's going to keep these guys hungry. So it could be a blessing in disguise because they will be practicing very hard. They will be hit very hard from the coaches about that and that has a way to keep guys focused knowing that they're not perfect and they still have a lot to do just look at that fourth quarter guys let's face it they were one pass away from losing this football game how would they have felt now if that happened Jeff Caves great job done on the sidelines thank you very much we appreciate it final score here 43 to 37 big win for the Boise State Broncos let's take a look at some stats final stats coming up on the board here the Washington Trust Bank stat sheet Wow, 732 total yards, 569 passing yards. Uh, most of those from Ryan Dinwiddie, about 30-some from T.J. Acre. But uh, what an offensive showing today. I don't think I've ever been in a game with 1,300 yards of total offense, and that's just about where we were today. The three turnovers, they were not good. Obviously, 11 penalties. Hawks not going to be happy with any of that. But 43-37 uh, is the key numbers to remember. Look at the time of possession. Double. Yeah, unbelievable. Great job. We'll be back with a final word right after this. Stay with us. Broncos pick up their fourth win of the year, 43-37. to 37. On a beautiful fall afternoon in north-central Louisiana, the Boise State Broncos win it by six, 43-37. to 37. Yeah, the celebration there at the end of the ball game. Tim Gilligan with a great, great game. Our next telecast coming against the SMU Mustangs on October 18th at 1 o'clock. Don't miss it. You see the celebration and the unhappiness as Boise State wins it 43-37. Thanks for joining us. I'm Ted Doss along with Larry Pulaski. See you next time.